celebrities spewing pro-Hamas talking points. Now, according to a new report, audience members walked out of the Dave Chappelle show in Boston last week after he criticized Israel defending itself uh, and bombing Gaza and said students supporting uh, Palestinians should uh, not be losing jobs over it. That's not what happened, Dave. I, I happen to think you're a funny guy, but you need to be a little bit more informed. The 31 groups, for example, at Harvard, they were blaming Israel, the victims of terror, for what happened, and only Israel. That's just pure ignorance. And the rest of the Hollywood, by the way, they can't help themselves, predictably. You have dozens of so-called A-list celebrities writing Biden a letter calling for a, quote, an immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Gaza and Israel. Why don't they send that to Hamas, the terror group that killed the 1,400 Israelis and took all the hostages? Meanwhile, after a brief hiatus over there at MSDNC, you know, NBC News with Tom Brokaw. Yeah, Mehdi Hassan returned to MSDNC in the airwaves, where he continues to spew his anti-Israel talking points. Take a look at this. Because a lot in the rest of the world would say, okay, if you're gonna compare Ukraine and Israel, Biden and a lot of people in America may see Ukraine and Israel as the same. A lot of people around the world see Russia and Israel the same. Right. Israel is the occupier of the West Bank and Gaza. Isn't making sure civilians don't get unnecessarily killed in conflict a key part of international humanitarian law? So tonight with an Israeli ground invasion of Gaza still looming, is this the kind of war, a year long war perhaps, according to Israel's own top minister, that the Biden administration has really signed up for. Maybe you should be telling them to put down their arms and stop killing innocent men, women, and children and taking innocent men, women, and children hostage. That'd be a good start. And if, if Hamas lays down their arms, no one else has to die. They started this war. Israel didn't want this war, but Israel will win this war. Now, first, Israel special envoy for combating anti-Semitism, Noah Tishpi is with us, founder of the Lawfare uh, Project. Brooke Goldstein is with us. Uh, Noah, let's get your take on this first here. I, I, I don't think I get shocked often, but the level of virulent hate and anti-Semitism I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. And it's not just on college universities. It's not just in Hollywood. It's, you know, in the streets of New York. I mean, Times Square is packed. It's all over the world. It's in Great Britain. It is in, in other parts of Europe. It is in uh, Australia, other continents. And it's a little shocking, shocks my conscience, and I'm sure it does yours as well. It actually, sadly, is not shocking at all. This is something that I'm sure Brooke can talk to as well. It's been a huge part of my work for many, many years. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And this is these are the days where all the anti-Semites are crawling out of their holes. I want to talk to Hollywood for a second, because you were referring to a letter that came out by a smaller group of Hollywood people, the usual hacks like Susan Sarandon that jumps to uh, bash Israel at any point possible. However, only recently, a new letter was sent to President Biden with a lot of big celebrities that is actually calling to release the hostages without demanding a ceasefire. Some of the people that are signed on the letter are Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom, Justin Timberlake, Tiffany Haddish, Zoe Saldana, Gal Gadot, Madonna, Chris Rock, a lot of people. So there is actually a change that is happening in Hollywood, finally. And a lot of people in the intelligentsia and elites are taking a pause, rethinking their position on Israel, on Hamas, and on the entirety of the Middle East. And I hope this actually trickles down at some point, because this has been a, a very lonely and aggressive and anti-Semitic uh, climate out there. You know, well said. And, and Brooke, I'll go to you, because you know, if you look at one border city, 10,000 rockets in 10 years, uh, you're, that's like a constant barrage of, of rockets. There's no freedom. Kids can't play outside. Vitamin D is kind of vital and important. Fresh air is kind of important for kids, but they're, in, they're playing in, in playgrounds that are underground in bunkers. That's their everyday life. That's the way they live. And, and yet nobody seems sympathetic to that fact or the fact the same thing is happening in the North with Hezbollah and and out of Lebanon. At some point, doesn't Israel need to have a protective zone where these rockets can no longer be fired into their border cities, that it won't be tolerated, that no more innocent people are going to die? And if you attack the Israelis and you commit acts of terror, you are going to pay the ultimate price, and that is Israel is going to destroy you. That's what I would want America to do if we were attacked. 
That should have been the policy for Israel for quite some time. Israel could have wiped out Hamas a long time ago. Make no mistake about that. But, you know, what's so appalling, and I'm happy that you mentioned the 10,000 rockets, because when I was in Israel just two years ago, when 5,000 rockets were being shot at me and my children, Nobody in Hollywood was calling for a ceasefire. Nobody in Hollywood now is writing letters calling for the cessation of the incitement to violence and actual violence happening against Jewish students across the country. Nobody is calling for an end to the pro-Hamas rallies that are happening in New York, in London, in Sydney, where they're calling for gassing the Jews. And as a human rights attorney with a expertise in the laws of armed conflict, I'm appalled at these ceasefire demands because they do not mention Hamas. They are solely about dictating to Israel how to defend her citizens from a brutal terror attack. And people like Dave Chappelle, who sit in the West from their position of privilege and attempt to dictate to the Jewish people, the indigenous people of Israel, how to protect their own women and children, Israel is not going to listen to them because it has no choice. It must eliminate the Hamas threat. And the entire Western world should be thanking Israel for doing what it has to do on the front lines of the war against Islamist terrorism. What do we do about the root cause, Noah? And that, of course, being the number one state sponsor of terror, that would be the Iranians. They have gotten away with these proxy wars for decades and decades. At some point, they've got to pay the price. Is this the point? I, uh, I don't know when the point is, but they definitely do have the, to pay the price. When you look back at literally almost every conflict, certainly in the middle Adam Abusala worked on President Biden's 2020 campaign in Battleground, Michigan. Yeah, I was working on Arab American engagement, getting people out to vote for Biden. So committed uh, that his Palestinian American right parents put Biden 2020 on his birthday cake that year. But today, as President Biden shows unwavering support for Israel in the wake of Hamas's terror attack, Abu Salah says he's uh, devastated. Right now I have family in Palestine who is afraid for their lives, um, and Biden is doing nothing to stop it. I'm hurt uh, for... The betrayal that we feel from Biden, but I also feel like a, a little bit of guilt uh, for what I what I've done. You just listened to part of a Meet the Press report by Shaquille Brewster, who confirms that Arab and Muslim Americans do feel betrayed by President Biden's unequivocal support for Israel and continued support for Israel, even as they indiscriminately murder Gazans who had nothing to do with Hamas's attack on October 7th. Now, this story comes as report after report. After report indicates that Biden is burning any goodwill he had left with Arab Americans to the ground. And to make matters even worse, there is a mutiny brewing within the State Department over the administration's stance, with high-ranking Muslim appointees reportedly considering resigning as a result of his decisions lately. And even though Biden has slightly adjusted his rhetoric to acknowledge the humanity of Palestinians a little bit, he still has not condemned Israel's war crimes or demanded a ceasefire, and he's now even downplayed the civilian death toll in Gaza. I to tell me the truth about how many people are killed. I'm sure innocents have been killed, and it's the price of waging a war. I think we should be incredibly careful. I think not we, the Israelis should be incredibly careful to be sure that they're focusing on going after the folks that are the pro pro propagating this war against Israel. And, uh, and it's against their interest when that doesn't happen. But I have no confidence in the number that the Palestinians are using. Now, put aside the fact that the Gaza Health Ministry just released the full list of deaths with names and ages that can be verified independently now by journalists, or put aside the fact that his administration is using those numbers internally, which indicates that he's lying there. But this point has to be made. 
when public officials and pundits deny and downplay what's happening before our very eyes, that is how genocides happen. And to see him say that is absolutely tragic. First of all, he says that Israel should be incredibly careful to go after Hamas in order to limit civilian casualties, but they're not. Limiting aid, shutting off electricity and water is collective punishment, which they admit that they're doing, and that's a war crime, and you haven't condemned them for that. Second of all, Biden is rejecting the death toll being reported by Gaza's health ministry because it's run by Hamas. And it makes sense in theory to not trust what they're saying, right? But as Adam Taylor explains in an article for The Washington Post, many experts consider figures provided by the ministry reliable given its access sources and accuracy in past statements. Quote, everyone uses the figures from the Gaza Health Ministry because those are generally proven to be reliable, said Omar Shakir, Israel and Palestine director at Human Rights Watch. In the times in which we have done our own verification of numbers for particular strikes, I'm not aware of any time which there's been some major discrepancy. Now, Shakir stated that they would not use the numbers if they were inaccurate because that also hurts their credibility as well. So despite the fact that Gaza's health ministry is Hamas run like all entities in Gaza, since they are the governing body of Gaza, like it or not, the numbers have been relatively reliable, which is why people use it, which is why Biden's administration internally is citing those numbers. But I mean, for argument's sake, let's just say that Biden is correct and they're embellishing those numbers. Well, as Kyle Kalinske or Dusty Smith says, well, let's just pretend like the numbers are half or even a quarter of what they're saying. That's still a lot of deaths. That's a lot of dead civilians, a lot of dead children. But let's go even further. Let's pretend for a moment that we don't have access to any numbers. No numbers at all. We have no idea. Well, still, even in the absence of numbers, there are enough high-profile deaths of civilians that we can see on social media. Enough examples of carnage that maybe might give people the perception perhaps that Israel isn't being as careful as you want us to think that they are. For example, former lawmaker Justin Amash announced that two of his relatives were killed by an Israeli airstrike while they were sheltering in a church. On top of that, moments after Secretary Blinken says he asked Qatari's prime minister to rein in Al Jazeera's coverage of the war in Gaza, an airstrike on the Nusrat camp in central Gaza wiped out the entire immediate family of Al Jazeera's chief Gazan correspondent, his wife, his daughter, his son, his grandson, they were all killed. And they were taking refuge in this camp after they fled from northern Gaza following the IDF's evacuation order. And on top of that, when you look at satellite images taken before and after Israel's bombing campaign, you'd be naive to assume that this destruction isn't also accompanied by mass deaths. I mean, look at this. If Gazans are lucky enough to survive this, they will be permanently displaced. Many of them already have been displaced, but I mean, entire cities are being leveled. We can see that. Furthermore, with a lack of electricity that Israel says they are denying to Gazans, and with fuel running out, meaning generators aren't going to be able to operate, babies in incubators and hospitals could literally die unless Israel either allows in additional aid or turns the electricity back on. So putting aside the numbers for a moment, don't you think that these tragedies, just the couple that I pointed out, there are many more, but just these tragedies that I highlighted, along with confessions from Israeli officials that they're focusing on damage and not accuracy, or that Palestinians are culpable for Hamas's crimes too, or that they're human animals, isn't necessarily instilling the most confidence in us that Israel is being as careful as you want us to think that they are? Have you thought at all about the optics and how they don't look good for Israel currently and that your unequivocal support for Israel kind of makes it seem like you're complicit in their genocide currently? I mean, are you concerned at all that it seems like you only care about Israeli deaths and have no concern whatsoever for suffering Palestinians? Apparently, these aren't concerns for the Biden administration. And if they are concerns, he sure as hell has done a poor job at showing that he's concerned. But the message to Arab Americans is coming in loud and clear. They don't think that he cares. Now, we kind of glossed over the fact that Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is pressuring a government to censor a news agency at the behest of Israel. That would be terrible even if Al Jazeera weren't credible, but they are credible and their reporting is mostly objective. But see, that's the problem. And former Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid explains why that's a problem. If the international media is objective, it serves Hamas. 
If it just shows both sides, it serves Hamas. In other words, support for Israel hinges on media being explicitly biased in their favor, because if people actually saw the objective truth and the barbarity of Israel's war crimes, they just simply would not support it. So they have to lie to manufacture consent. They have to disseminate propaganda in order for the public to support their genocide in Gaza. And our government is assisting them with that narrative, even after these hypocrites attacked Trump for calling press the enemy of the people. But now it's perfectly fine if the secretary of state pressures a government to censor a news agency that is doing good work. It's despicable. But I do want to get back to the NBC News report because there's another clip that provides us with important insight that the Biden administration is apparently missing. They said that we had to save America from Donald Trump. And now we feel that we have to save Palestine from Joe Biden. More than 300,000 Americans from the Middle East call Michigan home, a state President Biden flipped in 2020 after Donald Trump won in 2016 by just 11,000 votes. And although not all Arab Americans are Muslim, an exit poll from the Council on American Islamic Relations showed nearly 70 percent of American Muslims backed Biden. We're predicting this could be another 2016. Nata Al-Houthi runs the Michigan chapter of a nonprofit that studies and works to increase the political engagement of American Muslims called Engage. 145,000 uh, Michigan Muslims went out to vote in 2020. Biden needs the Muslim vote in order to win. And right now, it doesn't look good. The White House in Biden's campaign says they are aware of the concerns and are working to address them. We mourn every innocent life lost. We can't ignore humanity of innocent Palestinians who only want to live in peace and have an opportunity. But the publisher of the Arab American News, who last year vocally backed Democrats in the midterms, is calling for his community to withdraw its support. Did you vote for Biden in 2020? Yes. Would you support his reelection? No. I have I've already made the decision and uh, we are not going to endorse him in the paper. It's not only disrespect, disregard to our lives. In other words, there's an iceberg dead ahead. And Biden is sailing straight into it at full speed. And those aren't the only Arab Americans who've expressed profound disappointment with the Biden administration. NBC News reports, quote, Joe Biden has single handedly alienated almost every Arab American and Muslim American voter in Michigan, said State Representative Alabas Farhad, a Democrat whose district includes Dearborn, which is home to one of the largest Muslim and Arab American communities in the country. Farhad said he has constituents and neighbors who have family members trapped in Gaza, including some who are American citizens, and they feel completely abandoned by the U.S. government for not doing more to help get them out. As we've been talking about some progressive Democrats rushing to blame Israel for the hospital explosion that killed 500 Gazan citizens. Let's bring in Life, Liberty and Levin with host Mark Levin. Great to have you here, sir. May I just put up on the screen immediately after this explosion? She said Israel just bombed the Baptist hospital, killing 500 Palestinians, doctors, children, patients, just like that. POTUS, this is what happens when you refuse to facilitate a ceasefire and help de-escalate. Your war and destruction only approach has opened my eyes and many Palestinian Americans and Muslim Americans like me. We will remember where you stood. And I don't believe, Mark, that she has taken that back, given the, even given the evidence that we have this morning. Well, glad to see you. Glad to be here. Um, the Democrat Party has a problem, and it's affecting the entirety of the United States. They have a Hamas wing in the Democrat Party. Talib is one of them, but there's more than one. They call themselves Democratic Socialists. They had a massive uh, rally, or whatever they called it, about a week ago, with all the anti-Semites and Jew haters, and I might add America haters, the same ones. And people need to understand, she is the result, as are many of these others, of a 30, 40-year effort by Hamas and their various uh, terrorist surrogates to infiltrate our college campuses through Students for uh, Justice in Palestine. We know this from the Holy Land Foundation litigation. CARE is another organization that has worked closely with the Democrat Party and previously with the FBI and the Obama administration. 
Uh, she is the consequence of these things. She is heralded all across uh, the Middle East by not just Palestinians, but the most radical terrorists in the Middle East. And she's proud of it. And so she serves here not as a supporter of the United States, which she hates, but as a supporter of these various movements in the Middle East. And then when she comes under attack, she pulls her race card and also then takes a few steps back because that's what they're taught. And in that meeting in Philadelphia, where Hamas decided and their funders decided they have an influence in the educational system and media system and the political system in the United States, that's what they said. Don't be obvious supporters of who we are. Use propaganda, use techniques, you know, come across as sort of soft, but we know that what you are and what you're doing is what we support. So look, Here's the bottom line. We have allowed our college campuses to get away from us under this rubric of free speech and academic freedom, which, of course, they don't support. We have allowed our media pretty much uh, to hire a number of these individuals as hosts, bring them on as guests. Uh, we have uh, given tenure to professors, many of whom come out of the Middle East and are part of this movement or surrogates for this movement. And they're all around us. So people say, is this wokeism? No, it's not wokeism. This is planned. There's many scholarly documents in this. They follow the money. They follow the litigation in the past. They follow the names of the individuals who've come into this country. This is why having a wide open border is absolute suicide for this country. And so you see all these, these riots going on, right, all over the Middle Second, the problem for the White House is that so many voters are not making their decision on the economy. And the problem is the ones who are most likely to make a decision on the economy, and this is true in poll after poll, they're the ones who are most bearish on the presidency. What else is out there? A stunning number from Gallup this month, uh, just uh, out yesterday, uh, of October polling, showing the president at 75% among Democrats, that's a low. Joe, that should be close to 100. It's 75. The reasons aren't all clear. One of them is the poll was in the field when the president made his trip to Israel. There right. definitely is, is obviously a split about that among Democrats. Real split of, uh, among Democrats regarding Israel. Uh, and, and, and maybe you see that in the poll. I will say, uh, as Mike said, helpfully, if you're making under $100,000 a year, uh, which, which in the past was certainly uh, more than enough uh, to take care of your family. If you're making under $100,000 a year, housing prices yeah. are absolutely extraordinary. Rent prices have exploded. When the interest rates go up and mortgage rates go up to 8%, you're making under $100,000. You've got a family of four. You're not buying a house. I mean, we have, there's a story in the Times, I think, yesterday, a woman who's making $73,000 living in her car. Yeah. Uh, again, just, just the, 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 the housing prices alone are just out of control for people who are making under $100,000. Yeah, housing prices are, have certainly skyrocketed. Inflation, though, has certainly <clears throat> has cooled. It's still higher. Uh, people are still feeling that. That's, pe that's People are still grappling with that. And poll after poll suggests that Americans don't feel great about the economy and they don't think the president's done a good job. And the president of the White House point to metric after metric, including the GDP number yesterday, that suggests that's simply not true. Right. Um, and, and Mike, you know, we were just mentioning the Bidenomics rollout. They acknowledge White House 
that didn't that didn't really work. Uh, you know, so they have shifted. They're trying to shift the conversation around the economy now. But you just actually hinted at where I wanted to go with you. Is there's a real growing and, and worrisome for those in the West Wing enthusiasm problem around this president, particularly among young voters. We mentioned certainly the, the Israel-Palestinian issue is a significant one, uh, but it, it predated that. And, and it's, it's a number that's not turning around. It's only getting worse so far for this West Wing. Uh, how the Democrats you speak to, what is their level of alarm and how what, what's the chart they would propose, uh, the course that he, that he should take to change it? Jonathan, it's high, as you well know, for your own conversation. And what's the root of it? We talk about it on the show every day. A stunning percentage of Democrats don't want the president to run. We have a, a presidential election coming where a big chunk of both parties don't want their leading candidate to be running at all. That is tough to overcome. If they don't want you running, tough to uh, uh, say the right uh, thing uh, for them. And uh, what I hear behind the scenes from Democrats, when you get Democrats off the record, you ask them about the president, the most common thing I hear, and I know you hear this in your conversations too, is what are you going to do? Like that's the Democratic view. And that's the opportunity for this White House is you've got to turn that around. You've got to make that, uh, you've got to ignite an inspiring message. There's a year and a week uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, you're right, they're completely focused on it, but got to try something new, no way to sugarcoat that. Well, they, they've got to bring it together to their base. That's that's the first step. Uh, and, and, and Rev, uh, we had this discussion last night. Um, young voters, not inspired by Joe Biden. Black voters, the numbers just aren't there for Joe Biden. Hispanic voters, Latino voters, the numbers just aren't there for Joe Biden. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, if, if things keep going, is going to be the next president of the United States if Joe Biden and the White House ah. team doesn't do well. How to inspire young voters, black voters, and Hispanic voters to go out and not just vote, but vote at record numbers. I think that it is clear that he needs to have a new strategy, if not a new team that's dealing with his messaging that can target in these areas that we're not seeing the enthusiasm, black voters, young voters, Latino voters. Welcome to a Friday edition of the Nick and CJ show. I'm feeling good today. I'm one of your hosts, I'm CJ. What's up, Nick? Hey, what's popping? My friends, my family, it's great to be back. It's great to be back on Nick and CJ. Uh, you guys haven't seen me since Monday. I decided to take a few days off. I was going a little psychotic, if you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> like, I don't go yeah, to, like, yeah. people would be like, man, I got to see my therapist. I'm like, what the fuck is a therapist? <laughs> <laughs> Never been one in my entire life. But I'm sure if I was diagnosed, I will be diagnosed with some shit. Like, I'm smart enough to realize yeah. some shit going on with me. You know what I mean? Uh, so I had to take three days off. I feel refreshed. Like, I needed that. I've been focusing on my small videos, the hotspot videos. I was posting those yeah. on our channel. Um Saw that. Saw I take that. I take a few days because there was a lot going on, and you guys noticed like the last few live streams, my uh, analysis was just pure rage, right? It just like I'm I think I'm doing a good job explaining the situation, but it was just rage, right? That's why certain people crossed me at a bad time. You know, what I'm mean? people are like, man, you, yeah. you guys you really went hard, didn't you? I'm like, man, these motherfuckers <laughs> really pissed me off at a bad time. <laughs> You know what I mean? It pissed me off that bad time. Try to take a few days. You know what I mean to uh, to refresh my mind. Uh, and I saw uh, you know, there's a lot of breakdown regarding Eclipse, but like when you look at Mike Figueredo, when I look at all these Biden voters, you know what I mean? How are they not sick to their stomach? How are they able to sleep at night? Because God, you see, I'm mentally impacted by all this shit, and I'm not complicit. <laughs> I didn't vote for the guy. And I'm still like, what the fucking fuck is this? What is going on? Imagine, I could not imagine the mental state I would be in. The, the sleepless nights I would have if I voted for Jim Crow Joe. And you goddamn right. I am going to do a victory lap. And I am going to remind these people for the rest of their life. Because you guys have no idea how much heat I took. Being... The former Bernie staffer who came out against voting for Biden, right? 
I had the infamous infamous debate with Vosh while I was yelling at the motherfucker. And the people was like, man, this is Nick delusional. Vosh <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Vosh, uh, for the rest of his life, for the rest of his life, has record of him telling people to vote for Joe Biden. While I was warning Vosh and his entire white audience, don't vote for the genocidal motherfucker. And you want to know what Vosh and people like Mike Figueredo and all those people that were fighting against me for... Uh, and canceled me because my take on Born for Less Two Evils. These motherfuckers now doing videos like my figure out, like, I can't believe Biden is doing this. <laughs> I want to bring his video. College, if only some educated college dropout was warning you at the time. If only there was a black leftist journalist at the time who you guys relentlessly smeared was warning you guys about Jim Crow Joe. But see, John Lee chime in. You guys know I like the Well, to about, your but. point, to this point that you were just making, just like with the idea of white supremacy, something doesn't exist until white people discover it. For the PMC class in politics, nothing doesn't exist until a professional managerial class person says it. So when we say it, Nick, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You get what I'm saying? We're indigenous, yeah, if I you agree. will, to the idea. Yeah, to the idea, and indigenous doesn't matter to the professional managerial class, understand who they're modeling themselves after. But I'm going to bring up, uh, for the sake of this segment, bring up just a little bit of the Mike Figueredo clip since you refer to it. And it's good that you refer to it. Um, but and it's part of this whole thing, Nick, and that is RBN, Nick, we are so right on so many things and we put ourselves out there, Nick. Yeah, the first ones every time. And, and take all the incoming and then we just wait two weeks to, to a maybe a month. <laughs> then they go, oh, oh, now yeah. everybody's saying what we said. And, and, and it, almost the stream is kind of going to be uh, receipts to that because when we get to the Bernie Sanders, what we said about Bernie, when we get to the Peter Dow, what we said about Peter Dow, when we get to the every uh, fucking uh, time, County LA, you know what I'm saying? We everything we say is like then it, it comes to fruition. It's like, what, what do you want us to do? All we're doing is speaking our truth. It's just, it's one, but it's just that it's so it's satisfying. I was saying in another stream a couple of days ago, it is satisfying that some of these things that we've been saying, taking the heat from for that is coming. Uh, true, and this thing with right. Biden, Nick, because what was the title of our stream just on Monday? It was something like Biden is losing something support, yeah, because of Israel. And what it was like 11 points in the Dem among Democrats, yeah, right? That's, that's what we're covering for this segment right here with Biden filling it in the polls, just like Nick alluded to. And we'll one of us will bring it up in a second. He is down 11 points amongst. Democrats and what both the all these articles that I've been reading, Nick, all say they zoom in and say it's the stark contrast in the generations. It's just a a dip off at a certain point, and the dip off have come right when this conflict uh, with Palestine in Palestine with Israel has ignited or escalated. I should have said it say. It's all yeah. around. This poll has been taken during that time. Go ahead, uh, Nick, if you wanted to chime in. Yeah, um, there's actually, um, I found it on Friday because I tweeted about it uh, quite a long time ago. Um, it, I think this is it. This is it. I actually can't believe I found it. I reported this a very long time ago regarding this, uh, this subject, uh, regarding how Democrats actually don't know their party's position on Israel. Look, I, I, I tweeted this and I reported on this around August 9th, 2022, I remember I did a segment on this, maybe at Nick and Knight, where polls show only 15% of Democrats support the party position on Israel. One and then five? if you look, one, if you look at the five? graph, only 15%. Oh. And what? then if you look at the graph, like I, re I remember this vividly. If you look at this graph, because I wanted people who report on Israel Palestine before this month, right? <laughs> there are a lot of people that love talk about it now, but the reason why I had the position that I do that, and one of the reasons why RBN grew, because this is an issue I told people was very, very important. You were talking about how RBN gets things right ahead of time, right? Remember when RBN told RFK Jr. supporters and Marianne Williamson supporters why Israel and Palestine is not a small issue? And then you had RFK supporters are like, RBN making a big deal over Israel and Palestine. <laughs> then this happened, now the motherfuckers What's he, Arby, now? He's in the trash now. He's in the trash now. 
Yeah. I mean, there was hardcore RFK Jr. supporters that renounced his support this month of RFK. I mean, we was like, you guys think this is not a big deal, this issue. But anyway, sorry, let me get back to this point here. Um, when you look at Democrats, only over 50% of Democrats had no idea what Biden's position on Israel even was. Wow. According, look, if amazing. you look at this graph, look, 57% don't know. If you don't know, the blue side of this graph is don't know. 57%. And they was like, oh, we're just going along with this shit. You know what I mean? We're just Democrats. We watch the corporate media. They don't care about these uh, uh, these issues. I watched Kyle Kalinske. I watched the Breaking Points. They don't talk about this stuff. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and getting this shit popped uh, off, CJ. Uh, and that's what this, got, this is my first reaction when I saw that story, CJ, was this. When you see Democrats drop Joe Biden because of this, you got Democrats voting for monsters. Many Democrats are not bad people, but they have no idea what the fuck they're voting for, CJ. No idea whatsoever. Why? Because they get the news from TYT. They get the news from quote unquote progressive outlets that are tied to the Democratic Party, and all they hear is the Democrats are the lesser of two evil. But guess who was out there p- telling people that was not the case? Guess who was there educating people about the Democratic Party position on Israel? Guess who was there that was educating people about John Fetterman's position yeah. on Israel? Remember when we told you guys that the left should never support John Fetterman because of his position on Israel. And then you had the Vanguard, Cal and Crystal, <laughs> Max and the we got left, left, playing on the Red Pants and that Israel Palestine shit. You had John Fetterman fucking running, saying that he's going to be the senator that take care of Israel. He's going to lean on his relationship with Israel. And at the time, white leftists didn't give a fuck. They give, they're like, man, Nick, don't you know he's good on domestic issues? Why are you bringing up Israel-Palestine? And now John Fetterman comes out as pro-genocide, and he's saying people like, oh, my God, I can't believe John Fetterman betrayed us like this. Do you guys see how Who the left was, don't you, don't you see how the left was inflicted with this scourge of anti-intellectualism led by the TYT left? That's why I got on YouTube in the first place. Because I'm like, the, the entire U.S. left is filled with a bunch of infiltrators, as we cover Saturday, and a bunch of fucking morons who don't have coalition build and they lie about politicians. So as I say, my my mom, I'm gonna pass it back to you, CJ. If I vote for Joe Biden, I'll feel deep shame. And I am 100 percent pro voter shaming. I flipped on that position. I remember back in the day, I used to be like, man, I, I vote third party, but I'm not gonna vote shame people. That's a horrible take. You're not going to shame people voting for genocide? That was one of my old horrible takes. We 100% should vote shame people. You vote for someone who increased the police budget, increased the ICE budget, funding genocides? And CJ, not like he like flipped, nigga. That was on his record. I was talking I was telling the Vosh. I was talking like, guys, do you look at this guy's record? They're like, record. Facts. The past. Record. You guys are <laughs> messed up. Anyway, so you got past speaking. They're locked down the screen. Yeah, yeah. No, we got a while because we'll we'll be on this for a few minutes. But to your point, you made a lot of good points. So I want to make sure I cover them. Um, this is why, Nick, th- what you're making, the point that you're making, the broader point that you're making is that this is why policy matters. Because the pseudo left, what you say, the pseudo left, oh, we're for this. They're, they're for things, Nick, until things happen. They're only yeah. for these policy positions in theory. They're only anti-war in abstract, in theory. That's when they're anti-war. That's why they can be, oh, I was against all the wars in the past. I'm against any theoretical war in the present for everything in the, I mean, sorry, in the future, but everything in the present, they're not for, they're not against. The same thing, this is why policy matters. This is why you can't say, oh, this is why voting, this is why, this is why when they say you must disconnect your emotions, your feeling yeah. from your vote. It's, it's not, over. they're talking us into that. They're just that. They're just yeah. using that to mask who they really are. They're telling us that, but they're already there. What's Sam Cedar say? I don't care if he's funding the state. I don't care if the State Department gets more money. What does that do to me? They don't, these, these policies that they claim make them left are just sort of fluid. It could be whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? It's not it's not concrete in any sort of uh, material belief, so um, it's terrible. But but back to the uh, back to the um, 
to the topic. And the topic is Biden is really suffering. Where even on Morning Joe, Nick, you saw in that clip, Morning Joe says, look, um, uh, Al Sharpton, um, Donald Trump is probably going to be president here. If, unless he can turn around black, brown, young voters, Donald Trump is going to be president. And um, to, the, to another point you made, now that I see uh, the humanist report on the screen, another point you made about vote shaming these people. You know how they're getting out of it? You know how they're, I don't know if they're using this to mask their guilt, to make it seem like they don't feel guilty, is what they're doing. Ceasefire! Yeah. If you're not calling for a ceasefire, then that, you know what I mean? These little crumbs of support, these little crumbs of support after the effect. It's like, nigga, I told you he was about to get taken <laughs> hostage. Now that he's taken hostage, now you want to be like, here, let me help you with some uh, toiletries, nigga? What? What? I like, we, no, we told you in the beginning not to vote for him because he supports them monetarily. But go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. No, Nick. that's such a great point, CJ. They all these buying supporters going hard. Like people like Mike Figueredo, he has no leg to stand on. Like, can you? I can imagine being at that Palestine protest in Kansas City and telling these motherfuckers to vote for Joe Biden. Like they will be so fucking pissed, bro. You have no leg to stand on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 100 uh, uh, pro censorship. For, uh, I mean, pro uh, vote shaming for the same reason. You know that Crystal Ball, Crystal Ball have been going hard on Twitter about this issue. Yes, I've yes. seen a few tweets. That's I think like maybe a handful. That's like she go, she's going hard. I'm like, home girl, you were just the <laughs> one who was shaming third party voters for not thinking about voting for Joe Biden. And now seeing how ridiculous they was by promoting this lesser two evilism, they've taken upon themselves to try, oh, I'm gonna go hard on this issue. No, 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 fam. I'm going to vote shame you to the end. You don't do this thing well. Well, I'm, I'm calling out Biden now, no. Because I promise you guys, as Mike Figueredo and, and Crystal and Kyle are making these videos, they're gonna endorse Joe Biden oh, this yes. time next year. Unless they oh, yeah. come out and say they're not going to do it, that is my assumption. Because they always talk hard, guys. I thought after, and I'll pass right to you, CJ, but I thought after 2016. No, go ahead, go ahead. I thought after 2016 we was done. Like, I forgave a lot of Bernie supporters who voted for Hillary. Because I was like, all right, I'm glad that you learned your lesson. And that was back when I didn't believe in vote shaming. All right, so we're not going to do it again, right? 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 <laughs> Then I proceeded to see the Green Party get 3 percent Third parties did worse in 2020 than 2016. Uh, so I'm, I'm not playing nice no more. I played nice in between those four years, and I've seen a ton of Bernie people. I know you probably seen it too. They was like, nigga, I fuck, fuck Democrat Party. I should never vote for Hillary. I feel bad for voting for Hillary. And then that Trump derailment syndrome came. And all of a sudden, Jordan Sheraton for status coup and Zach from the Vanguard is voting for Biden. It's a, I'm not letting it happen. I'm shaming every single one of them. Go ahead, Make it. You got to keep, yeah, keep it in front of front of mind. But let's listen to just the, like the 60 seconds of this right here. A plethora of anecdotal examples of Arab Americans saying they're just not going to vote for Biden again. Full stop. Now, if that isn't a wake up call for the Biden administration, then nothing will be. Now, I think internally they know and they're scared shitless, but they're still not reversing course. Therefore, they are willingly bleeding support and not actively trying to change what's happening currently. Now, I know that most liberals and even a lot of leftists don't agree with. That. I'll be real quick. But one thing I know is no, I'm, saying this, I'm saying it just based on what I saw. I didn't see the video. I don't watch none of this guy's content. But based on what I saw, he, as he's doing this breakdown, at no point did he announce whether he's voting for Biden or not. <laughs> you know, you guys know that? Am I the only one knows that? Yeah. Within the first 11, and 40, 11 minutes and 40 seconds, at least. Like, if he said this later, I'll admit I was wrong, right? But thus far, he just given his neutral opinion <laughs> on what Arab Americans are doing. Instead of Reporting. saying, we should not be voting for Joe Biden because. The, the Arab Americans who are not voting for Joe Biden are right because you guys see how white, how strong, how how desperately he is clinging to neutrality while reporting on this issue. This leads me to believe that he's going to vote for Biden again, because why not take the statement in that angle? Because I had the statement queued up as well in my notes. I don't know when I was going to get to it. But you know what, what my angle to the story, CJ, is what the hell took these motherfuckers so long? Like they never <laughs> should have voted in the first place. You gotta see how his angle, even when covering good shit, is completely different. Well, I would take it. 
Be well, continue. So let's let me give a short lesson here. Here is Ally 101. Be an ally. This is how you do it. What you're reporting on, Mike, the community who's most affected is saying, fuck Biden. We're not voting for him. If you're an ally to that community, you go, you know what? The community who I'm in solidarity with says, fuck Biden because of this reading. Now, whatever. Let's say I don't have any egregious region. I'm not egregious myself. So I'm voting for him. Okay, let's go, guys. Let's vote. Oh, oh, my ally says this. Oh, because of this? The way you stand in solidarity is not voting for them because yeah. because of who you're in solidarity with. So this is allyship 101. But back to to the videos so we can uh, so I can get to the actual uh, two other videos. So let's see if he ever share his. Pregnant. Let's see if he share whether he's gonna vote for Biden or not. I, I would love to see yeah. if I'm wrong. Let's see if he injects his own personal opinion or he's gonna be this neutral reporter who don't give a fuck because he's not actually involved it doesn't impact his life that's you don't get this neutral shit from the rbn i told you guys i am reporting based on what shit that impacts my life i care about this shit i want to see my community thrive i want to see the better man the workers but what these people do they just like well the Arab americans fell this way is it right i don't know why are you being so neutral nigga that's for <laughs> cnn that's for news commentary we should be advancing the working class it's a small picky gripe i, I know i do and acknowledge that but i don't understand the neutrality from from these people but let's go let's continue to Jared with that sentiment that they're not voting for Biden. They think that they should vote for Biden because obviously Trump would be worse on the issue of Israel-Palestine. He'd be worse for Arab Americans. He'd be worse for every marginalized community, for poor people, for everyone across the board. And as someone with trans family members, I'm horrified at the prospect of Trump winning. I think he's an existential threat to <laughs> the existence of my trans family members. No and I don't think American democracy can survive policy. another four years of I let it continue, but Trump, Trump, Biden is doubling down on every single policy of Donald Trump. So not only was I right when he like not only not interjecting his opinion, he interjected his lesser to evilism into this. That's unbelievable, CJ. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and he's actually worse than I thought here. He's We're doing it right here. here. He's he's promoting Biden right here in the, in the video. video he's where promoting he's Biden. Sorry, go back ten seconds. I'll shut up for a bit. I, got one, I actually want to hear this part. Uh, this is extremely funny. Uh, to me. Just, you guys just heard me give him benefit. I like maybe later you may say fuck Biden, but no. Literally right after that, he comes out and support a Biden. Deal. Unbelievable. So we got to support the guy who genocide the Palestinian people because. The illusion that Democrats care and support trans rights? It's absurd. But let's, listen, let, I want to listen to it. I, I obviously heard, haven't heard this. This is extremely funny, CJ. Vote for Biden because obviously Trump would be worse on the issue of Israel-Palestine. He'd be worse for Arab Americans. He'd be worse oh. for every marginalized community, for poor people, for everyone across the board. And as someone with trans family members, I'm horrified at the prospect of Trump winning. I think he's an existential threat to the existence of my trans family members. And I don't think American democracy can survive another four years of Trump. Mm-hmm. Having said that, though, you Correct don't have to wrong. agree like, with their I, decision I, I, to not vote for Correct Biden. But it's Correct me if I'm wrong here. When they say that Republicans are threatening the existence of trans people, I am asking for a citation here because I actually looked into this. You guys know what the legislation they're proposing? Essentially banning uh, transition for minors. This is something that when you poll the American people is deeply unpopular. It's a deeply unpopular sentiment. And if Mm -hmm. you have trans people, the people that already transitioned, there is no legislation that will erase them from existence. So if they already did the transition, nigga, the bill doesn't force you to go back and make you turn back to your Mm. your rental gender. So this is something that's been bothering me for a while. They keep saying, oh, we got to vote for a fucking genocidal monster because the other party don't support minor transitioning. And my position is I'm not a member of the community, but I feel like this is something that should be up to debate. This thing where we got to support someone who... Who we gotta support a, a genocidal pro ice pro police party to protect children ability to go trans? You gotta see how those things don't fucking correlate to mm. me. Like that, that makes no sense. And I want to take pushback from this. That makes no sense. I'm gonna support the genocide of Palestinian people. I'm gonna support army Nazis in Ukraine so children can transition. Like what? 
No, no. What you're talking about is trade-offs, and it's the same thing. I this the exa- same thing I always bring up. But typically, when I bring it up in the past, it's been the trade-off when they say it, good in NLRB uh, yeah. uh, nominees uh, or appointees versus Armageddon. It's like I, I don't see how that's a trade-off, and you're making the same point. And I'm willing to admit, if I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to admit I'm wrong if there's legislation I have not seen. But I looked into this. The legislation they're talking about, the legislation that was flowing around in Missouri, is all about banning transition to teenagers without permission of their parents or all together. There's like the two variations of that. Either you need your mm-hmm. parents' permission to transition. Or you can't do it all together. Or you okay. can't do it until you're 18. There's nothing, in, well, from what I've personally seen, where they're going to ban people from being trans. So, so Mike says he got trans family members. That this legislation don't even affect them because they're not forcing people to, to detransition, right? So their rhetoric is false, like just fake based on the facts. And only that is there's the intellectual ridiculous trade-off that these mo- mostly privileged people want us to make. These are privileged people that live in the suburbs. They're like, the children's ability to transition is the most important issue, more important than genocide and strike breaking. And once again, I don't believe in that. I'm not right. saying that we reject we reject we reject taking either one of those as the choice and everybody should reject that. You're yeah, talking about lesser of two listen. evils. That that's what she that's what we should be rejecting. Let me let him finish his thought and yeah, then I'll bring up the other video that I was going to show here. But let me let him finish his uh, thought here. But it's very important that you understand where they're coming from. You can't just lash hang out. On, hang on. Let me let me cuz he did say something and I think I was saying talking we may have missed it. Let me rewind it just a little bit. I'm one with trans family members. I'm horrified at the prospect of Trump winning. I think he's an existential threat to the existence of my trans family members. And I don't think American democracy can survive another four years of Trump. Having said that, though, <laughs> you don't have to agree with their decision to not vote for Biden. But it's very important that you understand where they're coming from. You can't just what? lash out in anger at them, which is what liberals usually do when it comes to voters disillusioned with the Democratic Party. You need to listen to what they're saying. They so feel instead of hurt. explaining, they feel like they're just. So I want you guys to understand the conscious choice that Mike Figueroa, Figueroa makes here. Instead of explaining to his audience why the Arab Americans who are not voting for Democrats are correct because they are objectively are, he is saying, "Well, just don't get mad at them." You guys see the pro Democrat yeah. bias oozing out of these people. Like, I would not even in a million years consider this, this guy a leftist. Media. This See, I would never media. in a million years consider this guy a leftist. I wouldn't consider him an independent media. But that was like the majority of like Bernie and progressives thing. They, progressives think that Mike Figueroa to our left. Like, that was like the average RB and derangement syndrome. What? Shit. They, will, they, they think what? that RB and the right wing adjacent while this guy is on the left. It's absurd. Anyway, sorry. I'll let it continue. This is absurd. <laughs> <laughs> that is absurd. They're disposable. They feel used. They feel betrayed. They feel like they're not seen by this administration. And if Biden loses Michigan in 2024 because Arab Americans choose to stay home, he could lose the entire election. And guess what? That's on Biden. That's not on them. And Ellie Mistal explains why in an op-ed for the nation that Arab I Americans covered, aren't the only voters that Biden. I covered this op-ed, by the way, but he, he refers to it right here. And is alienating with his behavior here. He writes, Biden risks labeling himself as a president who is in favor of colonization and one who will turn a blind eye to ethnic cleansing and war crimes. And those are tough labels to shake once they take hold in communities of color. Voters of color are strategic and willing to swallow a lot of nonsense and vote for the lesser evil. But there are some who will simply not pull the lever for any president in any party who stands aside while an oppressed people is besieged, starved, and bombed into oblivion. Biden can entirely appropriately call terrorist attacks against the Israelis pure evil, but he can't seem to fix his mouth to say, turn on the water to civilians living in the desert. He can say that Palestinian people deserve dignity and respect, but can't unequivocally say cutting off electricity to civilians is a human rights violation. I'm sorry, but it's hard to see Biden's personal decency when he can't speak up for the thirsty. Biden is asking black and brown voters to trust that he values all lives equally, but that becomes almost impossible to believe when he endorses the treatment of Palestinians as collateral damage to a counterterrorism campaign. Moreover, 
And I'll stop it there. I, I wanted to him to include that part. I covered the article. I don't know if you had a chance, but I wanted you to hear what that I was surprised, Nick. It's a nation, it's in the nation, is written by that guy Ellie something. He's a one of them guys that comes on the view all the time. I'm gonna bring up the other video now. But um, I was surprised that it was actually in in a corporate newspaper. Uh, that they were actually saying, hey, man, you need to see what's up with this uh, Palestinian issue. It's not what you think. So to your point, Nick, they this is really showing to your point, proves your point. They had no idea where their constituency oh, is on oops, great country. where their constituency is on this issue. So and it also speaks to even the cowbell left, even some people, the cowbell left who, you know, you refer to were as far as people who just going to vote brainlessly for the Democratic Party. Some of those people, this is an issue. This is a red line issue, even for them. I'm talking about when you get to a certain age, there's a, this is a red line for them also. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I do want to show you this video, but I forgot. I wanted to show you this headline first. And the headline is here um we refer to this but biden's approval rating among democrats dropped 11 points in just one month now the reason because this is a corporate newspaper because the reason because what it should say is this is amazing or this is astonishing to see an 11 point drop in just a month over an issue that basically means this issue is a huge issue but because nick they support their staunch supporters of the israeli regime largely even these corporate uh, outlets they don't frame it even in that way because it should be framed that way because 11 points in a month that's, that's crazy that's a that is crazy. Yes. And I'll in your own party. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. In your own party. That is crazy. And I'll I'll possibly bring up the, the, the entire article and read more of it if we have a little time. But I'll read a snippet that I took out of the article. It says, um, and this is my what I say, my tweet. I say Biden is paying the cost for supporting genocide in Israel. And this is the quote from the article. President Biden approval rating among Democrats has plummeted to a record low of 75 percent, down a sec staggering 11 percent uh, percentage points over just the last month, according to a new Gallup poll conducted between October 2nd and the 23rd. Let me pause here. There's a couple of things. The reason this is sending shockwaves, they may not be saying, I mean, if we saw it on, on Morning Joe, so this is how you know it's sending shockwaves. This is Gallup, Nick. This yeah. ain't no, just no flimsy ass poll. This is Gallup. This is something that they, Dude, they. And this is after months of uh, Joe Scarborough saying, Trump is screwed. You, you guys remember all the segments <laughs> I covered? These bombastic claims of, oh man, Republicans yeah. are very fucking up, backing up with Trump, man. You guys don't say, yeah. Man, these polls saying Biden unpopular. Don't believe him, man. They fucking bullshit. You guys under always underestimate Joe Biden. Now he had to come out and do that report. Ego hurt as fuck. But he's gonna pretend he never said that. His audience got the memory of a goldfish, so they're gonna forget it. But it, it's it's a it's a big contrast. But go ahead, CJ. CJ. Yeah, and then um, later in the article, it goes on to say the divide is particularly stark between generations. Less than half, 48%, of Gen Z and millennials believe the U.S. should publicly voice support for Israel, according to the recent NPR. Now, you and I, we, we think 48% is a high. And the, the reason, again, this is a corporate newspaper, so even they are sort of shading towards Biden, even with this story being devastating. And let and, I me mean, explain, because... Because I've covered these polls before, I know how they're getting the number 48. Because if they were to split the, the millennials and the Gen Z, uh, one yeah. of those groups, I forget, one of those groups is in the 20s, like 27%. Those are the people we're seeing at the college campuses, the younger group. I, which and one is younger? Is it Gen Z or millennials? Which one is younger, Gen Z or millennials? Um... Also, millennials are Jenny. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Millennials. Go ahead. I'm a millennial. I'm a I'm a young millennial. 
I think the I think the older Gen Z, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, is like around like 22, 23. Like they're adults okay. now, they're like in college. Uh, I'm more, I'm more on the younger, younger side of millennial. I think the millennial cut off around like 25, 26. I don't fucking know. Okay. I just looked it up one day. I'm I know I'm on the younger <laughs> side of millennial. I think based okay. on the graph, you're like barely Gen X. Like if I if I remember the graph, yeah, me, me, me too. Yeah, I'm barely one by one or two years. Yeah, I'm barely yeah. a Gen X. Anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Um, but Gen Z, and so then Gen Z is the younger group. I was trying because I, I didn't remember. Gen Z is the younger group. This comment Between says older Gen Z is 26 from Katie Lewis. That's okay, that's the oldest. Okay, so Gen, Gen Z group, 18 to 34 group in that poll that I showed uh, in a, a different segment, they're at 27% support for Israel. So it's even lower. So they had to put them together to even get this number but to them 48 percent is devastating even to them so that leads me to this next part of this segment and then nick um i'll, I'll pass it to you once we're done with this segment to do your yeah. your uh, segments here but let's get now to this fox news because if you haven't been watching fox news my lord my Man. lord i'm talking about i'm talking Man. about fox, not not wall to wall i'm talking about on youtube just their clips yeah, fam. They have been putting out clips against this protest two or three every single day, Nick. They are really against this pro-Palestinian protest. And these this is the group of people that Biden is losing in the polls. These are the group. These, these millennials and all the people that are protesting, it's not just millennials, but this segment here covers the the um protests on college campuses but let's listen to a little bit here let's get to the college students all across this great country who are staging a walkout the campaign is calling for the united states to end their support of israel and the war against hamas killers many elite universities apparently are struggling what do you do how do you handle all the backlash Harvard is preparing a task force to support protesting students. And Columbia University postponed a major fundraiser called Giving Day on campus because of all the turmoil. They're part of a long growing list and we have to scroll it quickly. We can't even slow it down really for you to read it because there's so many names of colleges and universities from across the country that have been protesting against. Let me go back to that graph because it's important for us to kind of look at it, Nick. And the reason they scrolled all those names, because it's right, it's a lot of schools. And look at that graph. That That is something they can't act like they don't see. And we're seeing it in the reporting on, on Fox News. Other CNN and Fox, and they're acting like they don't see it. You know why? Because mm -hmm. they know the audience are pro-Palestinians. Even mm -hmm. some of the cowbell left, and they're seeing it in an 11-point drop. But Fox News is not. So they can go hard at these protests and they go, they've been going hard, but just look at that map. So if you're protesting in the United States, just understand you're making an effect here. Yep. You're, you got them pulling their hair out about this issue. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing your protest. This segment on Fox news proves that they're pulling their hair out about this issue because all of their propaganda, Nick, is not convincing these people because they don't watch legacy media. They don't watch these mm -hmm. people. They watch us. Dude, I, I, I wonder, I'll be real my quick bad, here. My bad, my bad. Like, go ahead. All good, all good. Uh, the people who don't study history, I told you guys many times, I wasn't through history before politics. The people who don't study history going through life blind as fuck. <laughs> like, they're blindsided by shit. Oh my God, my government corrupt. Oh my God, there's a war here. Oh my God. Nigga, all this shit was done before. This is exactly like Vietnam, fam. Remember the yes. giant youth protest and then the media was run, uh, calling these people communist sympathizers, anti-American. The same with our, uh, the peace protests during the war on terror. God, we, seen the same, we see the same damn storylines every few years. And people just shocked by it. But anyway, let's continue. Like, I just want to emphasize, this is literally our, uh, Vietnam all over again. Go ahead. Facts since the war began earlier this month. And when I say against Israel, and they say pro-Palestine, Palestine is not a country that the United States recognizes as any type of unified state. It's a territory where Palestinians live. That's how we term it. 
So and they are so upset that we even use the word Palestine, Nick. Because yep. she says when they say pro-Palestine, the United States don't even recognize Palestine like we give a fuck what the United States Yeah, like we get right this Negro, man. <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to upload the full speech. I couldn't. I couldn't share the speech. I'm very upset about it. Cause remember when I was at the Palestinian protest yes. uh, last uh, last week? And I shared a few of the uh, speeches on on Twitter. The one that you showed, it was about two minutes with the, with the senior citizen. Yes. Elder, yeah. the 97 year old Palestinian guy. I only got two minutes of the speech, and then even those two minutes wasn't that good because I didn't get close to later. Like, I eventually got closer. I really wish I uploaded that man. I'm very mad I couldn't get that guy's speech. I'll try, I'm trying to get him on the show if possible. He's very old, so it's gonna be tough. But he gave this history lesson that was unbelievable because you know, she said there's no Palestine. She's like, he like, bro, I had an ID before the Nakba that had Palestine on there. He like, I had the ID before. He explained before how the state of Palestine existed and what Palestine was before the Nakba, before the Western imperialists took it over. But now you see how the people who support Israel, which is not real, which is not recognized by many countries, and then they say Palestine not real. Zionists flip Amazing. everything that is true Amazing. into false. And they literally gaslight and they make believe and they fucking just make shit up. Like what she's saying here is absurd, and that's why I'm, I'm still I'm very mad. I didn't have the tech set up to get everything properly shot because that guy's speech was amazing. Like he taught me lots of I didn't know CJ like about the history wow. of the conflict and he lived through it. He was 97 years old. He explained how the Israeli government in the West wow, they, they realized him his entire life, fam. Entire. So this guy. Anyway, sorry, I'll pass it back to you. But I really wish I got that whole speech. Maybe I, I'm talking to the people who organized. That. I would love to get him on the show. Like, he, like you never that, like he had raw life experience knowledge, not book right. knowledge, CJ. Like life experience. So I'm trying to think back. Ninety seven. So, so you're talking about he lived in Palestine. If you're saying he lived in, yeah, he lived in Palestine a whole twenty some odd years before it changed for him. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It happened in the 1940s. So he was born in the 20s. Like, so yeah. he lived a clear, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he was like, imagine you living in the United States up until now, and then all of a sudden, th at this age, it just, yeah. all of a sudden, it just changes. It's like, what the fuck? So, I, I so yeah, he would have a lot of vivid memory. He would have a lot of vivid memory about a lot of stuff. Yeah, so the, the reason why I bring this up, just to dispute her point, because you see all the Zionists say this, Palestine not real, Palestine never country. He's like, bro, I literally had an ID back then I had Palestine. He explained this stuff in great detail, like how the what Palestine was before the Nakba. Very upset I didn't get that footage, but CJ, I, I pass back to you. You covered like two minutes of the of the of the uh, of the uh, the speech, and during that two yeah, minutes you covered, he like he like they, they tell you guys lies about history, tell you lies about how Palestine never don't exist. They tell you all these lies. I'm telling you guys, I lived through it. Everything they tell you about Israel and Palestine is not true. It was such a great speech. Hope yeah. maybe you might do one again. I might be able to catch it one day. But go ahead, CJ. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's listen out uh, the rest in this segment. It's really just crazy. And they elected. Don't know if they did it. Oh, here we go. Force. I got I got to go back a little bit just so we can get this little monologue from this. What we call she is what we would call labeled as a coon. Everybody. This is the coon. So this is where she's the working. The biggest example of one. Right. A Negro servant is the updated version that we've been saying lately. Negro. Hey, I've seen her. I've seen her analysis multiple times. I, I and it, like this is probably rude to say, but I literally do not even see a black woman when I look at her. I see a white woman with brown skin, if that makes sense. Like I don't even see no. her at part of my community at all. No, that's so that's true. That's true. Five state. It's a territory where Palestinians live. That's how we term it. Listen to this next part. And they elected. Don't know if they did it by force don't know but they put into office hamas terrorists and so when you support the humanitarian crisis of people that are happening all over the world who are arab but particularly in that part of the world on gaza you're looking at a situation where they've been in a humanitarian crisis ever since hamas took control they don't build electrical grids they don't feed their people they can't turn on the water that's why mm -hmm. israel does all of that is that why israel does it nick they they just weak people, Nick. They can't. Oh, I can't build my water. I can't do anything, guys. Help me, Israel. Is that is that how this his whole relationship developed? It's it's amazing, Nick. It's amazing. But if you don't 
No, they propagandas depend heavily on you not knowing the story. So they just omit facts and you just go, wow, that's what happens. That's what happened. You get what I'm saying? But anything before I put the so, video back on? Go ahead. I covered this many times before. Just for a second time, I'm not going to rant on it, but Israel poisoned around 95% of the Gaza water, by the way. Gaza was trying to supply independent electrical grids for their people. And as a result, Israel bombed their only self-sustaining power plant that they made in 2016. Anytime that any sort of Palestinian government tried to take care of their own people, Israel bombed those uh, uh, those institutions. They want to keep Gaza, they want to keep uh, them reliant on Israel. And any, any attempt to create own sovereignty for themselves is brutally attacked. But of course she won't tell you that. Because we live in the most propagandized country in the world. And I and the funny thing, my, the segment I'm gonna do after this is a propaganda report. It's gonna be brutal, fam. It's gonna be brutal. <laughs> I get, okay, it goes. I think it ties in with this pretty well. Yeah. You guys, so I, 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 I'll save you guys time for that later. But I'll pass it back to you. Yeah. And that's the, that's what's coming up. So it works out well. And then uh, I'll 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 round it out with one segment at the end. The Cornell West segment will be after you do your two. So let's uh, listen to more. It, it's it's a lot in here. So I know we're not going to get through the whole video. We might get through about four minutes of this video. It's a 12 minute video, but it's just it's just nonstop comments like this throughout the entire uh, segment. But let's listen to a little more. So when you support Hamas, you support killers. It is a conundrum for these universities. Does it have to be, though? Isn't it obvious? Alexis McAdams is in New York with more. Alexis. Harris, those questions you just asked to the viewers who are listening are the same questions that Jewish students are asking at campuses across the country, including here at NYU. Many say they don't feel safe walking around campus because of planned protests that are for pro-Palestinian people. So take a look here. This is a live look right now at Washington Square Park, where I am. It's going to be a campus walkout, one of dozens planned across the country. We're expecting to see hundreds of students show up here at the park after they leave class to, quote, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. This is not the first protest that they've had here. And people, including... Who now, France, you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself a couple of questions with these segments on corporate media because they're telling on themselves. Why is it when they say pro-Palestinian, you say it's pro-Hamas? Why is that? And ask this question. when You know how they try to pretend like, oh, we care about the innocent Palestinian people. So if the event is pro-Palestinian and you are pro-Palestinian civilian people, where is the problem? You get what I'm saying? So they're telling on themselves sort of in the wording that they're using in their own critique. But um, I'll, I'll continue the video. Talked to earlier, Harris, a young woman who's an American who survived that horrible attack by Hamas at that music festival in Israel says these walkouts and these protests make her feel uncomfortable and unsafe. Watch. This is America. I, I'm an American citizen. How can how can people just look away and, and justify the fact that my friends are, are captive. Their family members are captive. So they bring on one of the benefits, beneficiaries of the settler colonial project, and she happens yeah. to be in the United States right now. Can you now. imagine what her ancestors did? Like, can you imagine? Fuck out of here. Like, we're supposed to care what she thinks. Go ahead, Nick. I was uh, like, can you imagine what her ancestors did, bro? You know someone did some fucked up shit. Right? Like, she yeah. benefited from generational wealth that that was founded on blood i promise you fam i, pro I know how this shit works go ahead cj but the thing is i don't understand like the jump that they is just assumed that because they're pro-palestinian they're against you why are you feeling unsafe because they're saying don't kill palestinian kids and babies why does that make you as a jewish person feel unsafe that as jump is just a it's a it's a huge jump, you know, that they have to make in order to sell that. They're psychotic, CJ, and Zionists believe that if you don't support the genocide of Palestinian people, you are against their resistance. And they've been very triggered because they realize that young people, especially the black community, don't give a fuck if you if you like us or not. If your existence is relying on genocide, your existence is not valid. And I will say that straight to their face. I'll say that straight. Your existence is not valid if you need genocide to do it. 
And I'll say this is Zionist culture because most majority of Jews reject this nonsense here. Majority of Jews do. But go ahead, CJ. And we've seen student protests like here before at NYU. Students for Justice in Palestine and other groups at dozens of campuses encouraging students to head out of class and stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people, saying we need to divest from Israel's occupation and genocide of the Palestinian people in their Instagram posts they've been sharing. So pro-Israel counter-protests are also expected in the coming days. Uh, from University of Chicago to Harvard University, college campuses have been the epicenter of these ongoing protests. Protests and big donors are cutting ties with those schools, saying they are allowing anti-Semitic events on campus. At Columbia University, today's annual giving day was postponed, as you mentioned. That event usually pulls in big money. Last year, $30 million in 24 hours, but that's not happening today. So over at George Washington University, this just into our newsroom, new social media posts show these messages displayed on the outside of the library, Harris, at George Washington University. One message there reads, glory to our martyrs, and another projected in lights up there says, free Palestine from the river to the sea. So at uh, Harvard University, the student paid- It's weird. How You see how what they're saying is anti- <laughs> Not what's on the screen, but what she's saying is what she's saying is anti-Semitic. Saying free Palestine is anti-Semitic to you? Like, they, that's they think, so bizarre. They say that free Palestine, and this is literally what they're saying here, saying that people should be free for colonialism is somehow glorifying the execution of babies that, that never happened, rapes that never happened, and all these murders what? that Israel still haven't proved the number. The 1,400 numbers still haven't been proved for him. But this but this is the Caitlin Johnstone segment. Remember when she mocked the idea Well, where Zion is like, oh, you must be an anti-Semite because you're against children being bombed. You're against collective punishment. What? And this insane belief, like only the majority of boomers in the silent generation could believe this stupid ass shit. Young people are rejecting it. And and why are they panicking, CJ? Why are they panicking in this segment? They're panicking because they are realizing they can't cancel everybody. What do I mean by that? You know how the Zionists control the narrative? And you also know why, as Marxists, we understand that the professional managerial class will never be our allies? Because Zionists threaten jobs, and they threaten the economic well-being of people. If you're a student, you want to be a, a well-established professional in our capitalist system, you're going to need contacts, right? So Zionists right. are already creating blacklists for these people. This is why inherently, like just based on theory, a professional managerial class people are not reliable allies because it, at the same time, they are making a giant sacrifice. Like they may, they, they gonna lose their job and a lot of people are not going to pull that trigger, right? But when you got this many students and there's already a blacklist going around, uh, ban, uh, blocking these people from being hired. And this is how Zionists control the, the narrative. This is how Zionists control our country. They literally financially ruin people who are against the state of Israel. And they have done that for decades, successfully for decades. Now you got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. So my point is, they can't cancel them all, CJ. How big is your list going to be? <laughs> you, got, you see where the big, their panic is coming from, CJ? They're realizing their, their strategy to uh, keeping the professional managerial class kids in line is not going to work going, moving forward because there are too many of them. Simple as that. But go ahead, CJ. Yeah, so let, let me play uh, now this video here because it, it's uh, I played part of it with Sean Hannity, and I want to end and close it with this before I pass it to you because I just want you to – I want the audience to hear her explain – how anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic, because this is what uh, we're going to be talking about. Now, this is uh, Sean Hannity, so I'm going to I'm going to skip past this uh, him and his part, but to where she explains what uh, uh, anti-Semitism is here. So let me, or how anti-Zionism makes you anti-Semitic. So let me rewind it and let let him uh, introduce her and play it here. Take on this first here, I. I, I I don't think I get shocked often, but the level of virulent hate and anti-Semitism, I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. And it's not just on college universities. It's not just in Hollywood. It's, you know, in the streets of New York. I mean, Times Square is packed. It's all over the world. It's in Great Britain. It is in, in other parts of Europe. It is in uh, Australia, other continents. 
And it's a little shocking, shocks my conscience, and I'm sure it does yours as well. It actually, sadly, is not shocking at all. This is something that I'm sure Brooke can talk to as well. It's been a huge part of my work for many, many years. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And this is these are the days where all the anti-Semites are crawling out of their holes. I want to talk to Hollywood for a second, because you were referring to a letter that came out by a smaller group of Hollywood people, the usual hacks like Susan Sarandon that jumps to uh, bash Israel at any point possible. However, only recently, a new letter was sent to President Biden with a lot of big celebrities that is actually calling to release the hostages without demanding a ceasefire. Some of the people that are signed on the letter are Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom, Justin Timberlake, Tiffany Haddish, Zoe Saldana, Gal Gadot, Madonna. So she's calling out all the people who have bowed to the Israeli lobby, and that's it. I just wanted you to hear her say how anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic because this is the way they're going to be. This is this is not it's not new, but this direct connection that they're making with uh, being against Zionism is something that they're more forcefully pushing. And I'm noticing this is like the third segment where I'm hearing them clearly say it that I've never heard them clearly say it. Uh, uh, in this way. So I'll pass to you for any receipts if, for this segment or if you wanted to move to your Bernie. I know it's kind of related. It's still on Israel, but it's just a different perspective. So I'll pass it to you, Nick, for any. Yeah, anything so this is actually not the segment yet, but I would love to add to this because uh, this is something that I'm glad to see. Uh, Glenn Greenwald did a big video calling us out. Jimmy did a video that came out today calling out the right wing free speech warriors. If you look at my timeline, I got quite a few uh tweets that did pretty decent calling these frauds out and i've been calling these people out for quite some time like look at my time look how long i've been calling out the people who pretend that they're right wing for free speech like I, that's something i've been pushing back on from day one and one of the examples i give you guys was the bds laws how the right wing always was anti-free speech when it comes to israel palestine and a lot of people are just now realizing this now, also, why it's ridiculous when people say RBN is right-wing adjacent, even though I've been saying right-wing populism was a, is a fraud. That's been a prime thesis of my work, and I'm, I tweet about that all the time. But look at this. In the right-wing right -wing populist as a movement just, di like, died. Like, we've been calling it out. A lot of the people on the right who, who like my work always get upset when I do. But I'm like, you guys are fraudulent. You guys are not real. Uh, what the, the free speech warriors on the right... The only thing they ever fought for was the ability for white people to say racial slurs on social media. That's all. That's always what it was about. <laughs> well, this is Ron DeSantis, who just ordered the University of Florida and the University of South Florida to deactivate their Student for Justice in Palestine groups, a what? rank violation of the First Amendment. And because Ron DeSantis has laws on the book against anti-Semitism. Anti and you guys know this, anti-Semitism for them is a way for they can push identity politics the same way they accuse Democrats of doing. Another right. thing I taught yes. us, what have I said? I When people say, man, RBN, you guys always talk about race. What's up with you and RBN on, on race? I'm like, motherfucker, everybody talks about race and identity politics. The entirety of the right wing Right-wing populism is nothing but white identity <laughs> politics. I, how many times have I said that? So the same people who decry liberal culture for woke for woke culture, who we also criticize for being fraudulent in a lot of ways, they also engage in the same thing. How many of these right-wingers mm -hmm. go write articles, they segments about, about the rise of anti-white racism? They, they, they people believe that anti-white racism is the biggest problem in the world. And then they talk, about, oh, my God, you guys are anti-Semites because you guys don't want children to be bombed. But then we talk about how the fact that black people are 40% of the homeless population, how black people had the highest medical debt. And then they're like, RBN, oh, stop playing identity politics. <laughs> Only one of us is actually talking about serious shit here. You talk about the realities and the material conditions of our community. I don't view that as identity politics. I view that as just politics in general. Everyone advocates for the community. And for when we whenever we advocate for our community, people say, oh, you play, we play identity politics. But that's the entirety of the right wing. 
even to the point where they just rank a banning something they market their party on. Here's Nikki Haley, the most unhinged candidate in the race. I'm proud to have been the first governor to sign anti-BDS legislation. If you guys don't know, that's the boycott, divestment, and sanction movement. People who support Palestine. People who support nonviolent resistance. You guys see how they ban nonviolent resistance. That what BDS is. It's a violation of, of your First Amendment and your right to boycott as well. As well. So what they saying, you must condemn Hamas, who I don't. You you must condemn Hamas because Hamas don't believe in just peaceful resistance. That's why Hamas is bad, CJ. They don't believe in peaceful resistance, meaning die, dying quietly. But then the people who disagree with Hamas and they engage in peaceful protests, they ban that. You guys see how there's literally no effective way they want people to resist the uh, the state of Israel. They want you to Israel. die quietly. They want you to die and quietly. And this is the reason why. And this is one of the things that made me turn on Marianne Wilson immediately when I originally praised her for being for reparations and stuff like that. Then I saw her take on BDS, which is like, well, there's some instances where you're going after Israeli businesses, uh, BDS that could be anti semitism. She deleted a lot of these tweets that we we covered this before. After that, like, if you speak out against BDS, you are fucking done. Like, there's no no justification for that. Because BDS is an effective movement that satisfy your guys' pacifism. You guys understand? The pacifism that you guys weaponize on the Palestinians, that is what they do, and you guys still ban it. So, and now they're trying to ban students protesting. You think the people don't know what they're doing? You think... You people don't think they know their role. You think these people haven't studied history the way I have? They know what their fucking fathers did. They know what their grandfathers did. And they know what their great-grandfathers did. They follow in their tradition. Committed genocide and spreading propaganda to get people to support genocide. I don't give these people any benefit of doubt. So that's my bone on that segment. Um, I'm going to read some Super Chats real quick. Yeah, uh, we can do a couple. Get, I'll read some Super Chats and then we get to the next story just so we get too behind. Uh, then for the 199, puts the Mouse. Thank for the 199 or being my daily dose of realness. Appreciate the 199 and solidarity, my friend. Also to Biden who leave consistent <laughs> super I appreciate that. Thank for four bucks. Nick, you seen that Brown and Joy Gray interview a year ago with Matt Stroller. He said China's new Nazi Germany. Uh he said China is the new Nazi Germany dude. It's considered the left. Wow. And that's another thing that's funny. I'll I got so much heat, fam, because you, you want to know another thing I came out first on? Like, like at least in terms of the progressive left, the idea that we committed a genocide in China was ridiculous. It was, was, it was, had no basis in fact. In fact, the Trump administration State Department did an investigation because they wanted to prove it. <laughs> and then they're like, damn, we got no evidence that this shit's going on. You had an Associated Press that did an investigation found nothing that was going on, let alone the countless journalists from all over the world that traveled to see what the fuck was going on and they didn't find anything. Mm. But what people believed, and I took so much heat, CJ, but for being a quote, quote unquote genocide denier because I want to see evidence of a fucking genocide. Now <laughs> do you guys see how absolutely ridiculous, now that we see a real genocide, we see a real genocide going on. Now do you guys see how absurd it was to believe ever ever that China was doing some secret genocide that no one can track? Do you know how absurd that is in the modern age? CJ, they got a genocide, but no one can see what, no one can prove it. <laughs> Once again, I was I was out front on that. My radical communist ass, and I took a lot of heat. That was one of the things that Bernie supporters canceled me the fastest, because the Bernie left, they still believe in the China genocide. And only the right wingers, wow. you got progressives that still repeat that bullshit to this day about China genocide. Ro kind of love calling it. Um, wow. I read three more, three more, and then I'll move on. And then we read the rest of the chats after uh, after my next segment, the next segment after that. Then from 1999, uh, Ivan, pre- appreciate you all. Keep up the fire. Uh, appreciate you guys as well. Big shout out to my friend Lucy, Blue Moon Rare Wine. Yeah, and what's up, Lucy? I, you guys all know Lucy was the one who, who cussed out and Pretty much destroy AOC in her own language <laughs> in Spanish. That shit was 
gangster stuff. Big shout out to Lucy. Uh, thank you for five bucks. Do you see? Funny how self identified conservatives are so officially liberal when it comes to war games, and no one ever calls them out for that blatant hypocrisy. Guess who calls them out for that? I do. That's why I love talking to Republicans. I'm like, you guys realize you're liberals, right? Like, you guys don't know how words work? Right? <laughs> like, you, you guys are liberals. You guys are neoliberals. Like, you guys believe in the exact same thing the Democratic Party do. Like, you guys are pretending that you guys hate Joe Biden. You got to pretend this board is open, even though he invested record amount to ICE and border security. You got to support funding the police the same way neoliberals do. You got to believe in a strong national security state, police state, in order to keep the workers in line. There's no real difference. So it's, that's why they got to pick these culture war, war issues up. And I have so much fun. See, you know what I'm talking about? I, I, I was like, dude, you're just a fucking liberal, dude. It's like, you no different than Hillary Clinton. You're you're the same goddamn thing. And then I can justify it. And and I'm, I'm, so I'm glad to point that you bring up D.C. Uh, last one, and we get to this. Very painful propaganda segment we're about to get to. I think for the 199 Cobra, I'm just donating to say, boo, three arrows, gang. <laughs> I think for the 199 Cobra, I want to get, um, let me pull this up here. So we're going to do a propaganda report next. Um, I have quite a few stories. I'm thinking if I'm planning on doing a live tomorrow to make up for the fact I didn't do Nick and Knight and the fact that I have a ton of fucking stuff to cover. I decided to do propaganda report because I want to get your reaction to some to a few of these things, to be honest. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys why I believe both parties are the same. They all support genocide. Uh the difference is that Democrats they say they support genocide with a smile, while the Republicans are just straight up genocidal. I don't give a fuck, let's kill them all. So the, the point of segment is two ways to sell genocide, the liberal Democrat version and the Republican mm. conservative version. So let's start with MSNBC first. I'm going to show you guys how the liberals sell a genocide. And this is the kind of gentle language that tricks the average dumbass Bernie Sanders bro into believing that liberals are somehow better than, than Republicans. But the, despite the different tones you're going to hear here, what these two people, what these two segments advocate is for the same exact fucking end game. The premise that Israel has the right to commit their genocide on the Palestinian people right now. That is what both these segments are going to argue. Here's the liberal version of it. And to me personally, and leave, it, leave a comment. I'm, I'm interested to see which one they going to discuss you the, the most. Um, both of these segments discuss me. Both of them do. Uh, I think you guys will choose because they they both very polarizing. I want you I want you guys to tell me which one is worse. But they got the same message. So let's listen to this. Welcome back. In the days since Hamas terrorists stormed into Israel earlier this month, a flood of videos and photos and misinformation on what happened have filled social media, making it difficult for people from around the world to sort out what is the truth? Mandana Dayani, an activist and the co-founder of the nonpartisan organization. I am a voter, address that major issue and more in an Instagram post that has now been viewed tens of millions of times. I was born well, this lady here went viral for this video that liberals and genocidal Zionists loved. Now I watched <laughs> this video and I was in horror watching this video. I think it's gonna explain for itself. Listen to the liberal. Now this is the liberal genocide apology the liberal Zionists, who many are not going to come with to the conclusion that they are as aggressive as Fox News. I don't think a lot of you guys are going to come to that conclusion. I'm going to tell you guys personally, my personal beliefs, I'm not even telling you guys to do it this way. My personal belief is I view both of them as disgusting. Because wait till you guys see the Fox segment. Look at this video here. Run under um, the same regime that is supporting Hamas right now. And every single morning we were forced um, to chant death to America, death to Israel. And it's almost like shocking to watch these Americans support an organization that wants them dead and hates every single thing about their values. You sit there and repost terrorist propaganda and somehow think that that makes you an activist or someone with some sort of deranged liberal values. You're going to rallies in Montreal, New York, Paris, and London and celebrating the death of hundreds and hundreds of Jews that were slaughtered on a religious holiday. You guys see how she is saying the same thing Republicans are saying that you just showed. She's conflating yep. people who are protesting for a free Palestine for people who support <clears throat> the slaughter of innocent civilians. 
You see, she's saying the same thing Republicans are saying, but with a liberal tone. I'm a liberal. I'm I'm I'm, I'm simply. You guys, you're gonna see this more throughout this interview. And if you guys missed the beginning, because the beginning was kind of uh, muffled and cut off, they she explained how she's a refugee of Iran, CJ. She's here to tell you why the state of Iran is so evil and why the United States is great. The fuck out yes, of she, here. She's one of, those people, out <laughs> she's one of those people that sell out her own people and then join the West and become a celebrity in order to advocate war against her own right. state. You know, you know the DPRK people that do that, the anti-China people that do that? Yeah. She's the Iran version of that. And if you guys don't know... There are Iranian liberals that do this all the time. I'm from Iran. They're a tyrannical regime. We need to do regime change. There is neocons and the same as the Republicans here. So I'm going to go back just a little bit. I'm going to let her part finish here. Once again, to me, when I see this, it's going to be as unhinged as anything you see on Fox. Because she's saying what, the, what people on Fox is saying, but she's trying to say it with a lens of liberal credibility. So let me continue here. You guys just pick up what I'm talking about here soon. Montreal, New York, Paris, and London, and celebrating the death of hundreds and hundreds of Jews that were slaughtered on a religious holiday in their sleep. You think this is liberal? You think this is liberation? You think this is resistance? Where is your humanity? What is happening here? As a child, Madonna. You see her liberal language, CJ? That this went is, viral? Was, yeah, yeah. That went viral? Yep. I'm so out of touch. These liberals, I'm so out of touch. I, I'll let them explain to you that. I'm going to let them explain the viral part. They're about to explain that here very soon. With her Persian Jewish family before being granted asylum as a refugee in the United States. And she joins us now. I should point out that that video on your channel was viewed 15 million times. It was shared. It has been viewed uh, ult ultimately in its totality up to 15. Do, do you guys really believe this shit was viewed 15, 000, 15 million times without the State Department and social media companies boosting this shit? That's not. That's why I said that 15, went viral? Yeah, she got 15 million views. They're going to say she... in. Uh, in total, it was like 30 to 50 million because she spewed this liberal Zionist garbage. And if you think the video was bad, wait till you see this interview. Because, oh, of course, Morning Joe see this viral Zionist garbage and the first reaction like, yes, queen, liberal apology for genocide. We must bring her on. You guys see the people that they must bring on? And there's no one that can convince me that she's not a State Department cutout. You guys see the backstory? She's an Iranian refugee that's being boosted by the State Department, and now she just so happened to be on Morning Joe. You guys think that's she's what not I was about State to Department? tell you? I was just yeah. about to tell you this is not at all some happenstance. This is a this yep. is a this is a plant, and this is the backstory they're giving you a certain viral video, a viral video that they can prop up and amplify and do what they do all the time. And now she's on Morning Joe. The show, Nick, understand, and we do this all that we say this about Morning Joe. This is the show. You want to know what's going yep. on in the minds of the ruling class and what they want to deliver as a message. You watch Morning Joe. That's who you watch. So this is the message yeah. they want to deliver. Y'all and me park. I always forget her name. That's the famous. Like she get dragged, uh, like people like Rogan and many other people gave her credibility. But her claims was so ridiculous. She now is like a meme. Like she's a person that said. In North Korea, people push trains by hands. And then when she sat down on the Joe Rogan podcast, everyone was like, all the dumb morons uh, who believed her. Uh, like, see, there were a lot of dumb morons like Joe Rogan who believed her up, up to that point. And then when she said that, they were like, oh, we've been listening to a crazy person this entire time. That's her. Like They, they have all these privileged uh, plants, these refugees that come from states that the United States don't want that always advocate against their, their regime. But anyway, I think you guys would pick up on that as I play. I'm going to play it. It's obvious. This person is a fucking plant. It's the, the most obvious plant ever. And she's the liberal version of the person who's selling genocide. And I'll explain to you guys why I view these people as equally disgusting personally. And I don't think a lot of you guys to agree with me, to be honest. Once I show you guys the Fox News you got a clip, you guys are going to be disgusted. But I view both as disgusting. This psyop that they're doing here. But let's listen here, and now I'm going to go to Fox clips. 50 session. million times. You really struck a chord what prompted you to just put it all out there and go there and say that um you know i woke up on october 7th and saw the worst atrocity i've i've seen since 9 11 and um 
I didn't really know how to process it. It was so painful. And then I went on my social media and, you know, I'm an activist. I've worked shoulder to shoulder with so many people in Congress and universities, activists, and they were either silent or they were starting to side with Hamas mm -hmm. or they were starting to blame the Jews or their government for the terrorism. And that's just not something that we do. We don't blame victims for terrorism. And I couldn't understand this whole like, oh, it's because of this, it's because of this land dispute. It's because, like, there's no reason that ever makes that okay. See, that she don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I said it so many times on the show. You guys know that 2000, uh, 2022, last year, was the deadliest year ever for Palestinians. Does she care about that? Was she, talk, was she crying about that? Was she, cry, was she crying when Israel raided mosque? Literally committing the most colossal sins and aggressions against Muslims that you can possibly... I can't imagine because I'm secular, I'm not religious, but imagine you got motherfuckers invading your holy place of worship and they are they are forced to die quietly? That's what they want them to believe. I'm not even religious. I can't even imagine the fury I would have with you guys raiding mosques. In attacking innocent civilians. And she's like, I don't understand. I don't get it. Because you're a plant. You're a privileged plant. Of course you don't get it. But let, let's continue. We didn't get a day to be upset. I mean, there were hostages. We were finding out information about beheadings and mass rapes. And instead of mourning, instead of checking on our families, we had to go on the internet and defend our dignity from misinformation. <laughs> and I have never seen that happen before. And it does feel like that happens when Jews die. Mm. And when you see the Hamas doctrine, which explicitly <laughs> says it calls to obliterate Israel and kill Jews. She is saying the same damn thing. Now, Jesse Waters is going to say some crazy shit too, but he just, he says it more aggressively, right? But you guys see the messaging is the exact same. If you protest for a free Palestine, you support Hamas. Hamas one kills all Jews, but that which is not true, which is not which is not true. They want to kill the Zionists, which they have the legal right to do because the fucking inhumanity the Zionists has put them through. Because of the fact that almost everyone in Palestine, no one who's been killed by Israeli forces, and and if you want to get mad at them for saying Jews or whatever, you understand that Gaza knows nothing but Gaza. Me Palestinians know nothing but Palestine. They see the Zionist entities and they may conflict that with Jews. But when Max Blumenthal and many other pro-Jew, uh, Jewish, uh, free Palestine people go to Palestine and Gaza, are they killed? Are they going after Katie Hopper, Max Blumenthal, and all these Jews that speak out against Israel? They do not. So they go after the Zionists who support their oppression, which is their right. That is their right. But they saying, oh, Hamas will kill all Jews, including the ones who want to free Palestine, CJ. That's what they want you to believe. <laughs> So the same thing that you hear on the right, she is saying, but she's saying with era the uh, the aura of a liberal. So I'll let her finish. I'll play no another complete psyop. This is a complete psyop uh, right here, and what this is this is what this is supposed to say. They see the protest. They see. So this is a young person. This is a young person who is saying, "No, I don't believe this. I believe this." You get what I'm saying? So. That's what this is. This is meant to combat all the protests that we're seeing, um, pushback that, that we're seeing in the polls with, with Joe Biden and the protests we're seeing on college campuses. Yeah. This is so a I'll, I'll play just a little bit more of this just so you guys can hear the rest of her ridiculous argument. No need to play the rest of the full thing. Mirror the segment. I show, we show you guys the liberal version. I hope you guys see why I find this disgusting. This is a very advanced psyop where they're saying the same thing the right is doing, but she's saying it in a liberal way. She's like, well, advocate for Palestinian liberation. That's not liberal. Supporting my genocide is, for some reason. I'll let her finish her thought, and then we can get our final thoughts on this and move on. Doctrine, which explicitly says it calls to obliterate Israel and kill Jews. I cannot understand how people would defend a terrorist organization. Yeah, and you've read it. Israel and is a, a terrorist state. response to this. <laughs> A lot of people reaching out to you. You've been busy ever since you put this out there. Uh, because liberals love her. But once again, I I will aggressively put back against this because I have no manager they can call anymore, at least. I know some people are upset about it. No manager you can call anymore. Uh, no one that you can report to. They, there's no way they can cancel me. So I'm going to straight up say it. I'm like... Israel is a terrorist state. She said, I can't, how do people apologize for terrorists? You apologize for the state that where Benjamin Netanyahu says it's okay to bomb hospitals. 
Like he said that in the past. People straight called for genocide of the Palestinian people. The country that is out of compliance with international law, fam. The only reason they're not quite literally considered a terrorist state, CJ, is because of the United States and the UK. I don't understand why people can defend this terrorist state of Hamas. Hamas is not the terrorists. You guys know that? Ooh, shocking. when they I say said. stuff like that, when I, yeah, yeah, I can see why people defend the terrorists. I'll be like, yeah, I know Israel. I'm with you. Yeah, I just go along with that, but I make sure they understand. No, it's and Israel I will say, on, I will say it to their face, and I'm gonna get canceled like a motherfucker. You know, travel. Hamas is not terrorists. They're not the terrorists. Israel is the terrorists. Do you guys know? According to the UN Charter. You have the right to armed resistance against a terrorist rogue apartheid regime like Israel. If people, if you have an apartheid that you oh you God. have the right to resist them, so why do you guys think the United States always block those <laughs> UN resolution proposals in order to prevent Israel from literally being defined as a terrorist state, which would give Palestinians the legal right to defend themselves? So. I'm not going to set the frame of the Hamas as terrorists. They're doing what the UN Charter said they should do. And they're engaging in the rules of engagement that Israel started. Where Israel targets civilians on Hamas, that's all they know. They fight an enemy that have been targeting a civilian their entire life. So what they're going to do? The same thing that Israel did, because they, they defined the rules of engagement. And I've been saying to CJ, loud as hell, waiting for someone to challenge me on this, on Twitter, 103,000 followers, these tweets getting thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. And no Zionists ever say anything about this, CJ, because they know I got them checkmated here. Because I am not making up ridiculous revolutionary laws. I am quoting stuff that is in their book. And that's why I would say on Morning Joe. And how would they dispute that? Aren't you the lawyers? You're the lawyer, but you don't know the law? They do. They willingly spread propaganda. So um, I just want to see her response, and I'll move on because I don't want to say you know. wrong. So I just want to see her speak one more time. And then we move on. Nodding your head uh, to a lot of what Mandana had the to Donnie say. The Donnie Deutsch guy is just... Actually, no. Yeah, he's himself, but we don't have to hear from him just for a second time. I think, he is I think we heard, crazy. I wanna, <laughs> yeah. That guy. All right, so he's going to say a lot of crazy stuff, but he only speaks for 50 seconds and then she speaks again. So I'm gonna no, I like up. his entertaining, though. It's entertaining. He's yeah. just... He's just... You talking okay, about I'll wrap privilege. Up around here you talking that. about privilege, boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll wrap up around here, so maybe three minutes. I'll let a lot of this play, especially him. I'll let a lot of this play, because I want you to get more What you're saying, which seems so more revolutionary, minutes. should be matter of fact and, and good for you. And as you said, we're only 19 days from 1,400 Jews being, Israelis being slaughtered, massacred, beheaded, raped. And, you know, just if Where I go backwards a little bit in the and past, and I think of the images. They're just making stuff uh, up. Uh, a young woman holding up a sign that says, you know, clean the world from Jews, ethnic cleansing, and a group of young Jewish students huddled in a library, uh, afraid as a mob is pounding anti-Semitic chanting outside. When I think about the past... So he's just, so he's just making shit up. Berlin in 1939. I'm going to let make shit up. New York City. Like, this is just making shit up. On Cooper Union campus. And people need to remember, Israel is not fighting the Palestinians. They're fighting Hamas, a terrorist Nazi-like, ISIS-like organization. We what? can't forget that. Tell tell us about the response you've got. Um, As this person wanna... points out, Israel is killing you, UN staff. It's been killed by Israel. But they're not the terrorist state here? Is, is Hamas killing UN officials, CJ? I'll just, I'll just check in. I didn't <laughs> hear anything. What Donnie had to say, and, and also what your call to action is from your perspective. Yeah, well, I mean, again, like, I was born in Iran, right? I was Iranian. I looked Iranian. My family had lived there for thousands of years. And then one day the Islamic regime takes over and I'm a Jew and I have to flee my homeland. And that has happened to hundreds of thousands of Jews that were in diaspora throughout the Middle East that have been forced out. And so I don't think people understand what Israel means to us because we had nowhere to go. <laughs> I believe that my safety and security is inextricably linked to Israel. And that if Israel didn't oh. tomorrow, I literally, despite living in Los Angeles, think that I would die. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I she, despite she living knows in Los Angeles. That, is. <laughs> that was so stupid that she literally could not stop herself from saying, well, <laughs> other than the fact I live in LA, other than, other than this giant thing that contradicts what I just fucking said. <laughs> what? 
I got to wrap this on this part, dude. That that's fucking glorious. Man. I don't have to explain why that's unhinged, right? I live in LA, yeah. but Zion, but Israel being gone is going to make me endangered. And I made this argument before I wrap the liberal segment on this. Israel is a state that makes things more unsafe for Jewish people Mm -hmm. because people who I do not agree with and I condemn with every ounce of my fiber of my being, the people will inflate Jews with Israel and people will be victims of hate crimes because of what the state of Israel do, something I highly condemn. So the state of Israel will make you unsafe. The crimes that make you unsafe. So the state of Israel didn't exist. You'll be safer in LA if they didn't exist. If Israel and Zionism make Jews unsafe, Israel, uh, you have people in Israel being taken hostage. Their hostages are being killed by the Israeli government. They don't want the hostages back. They kill their own hostages. So that's Israel making things unsafe for Jews because they kill their own hostages. You have anti-Zionist Jews, anti-genocidal Jews in Israel that protest against their own government, and then they get locked in cages after being beaten by the IDF. So what is that? That is Israel making life unsafe for Jewish people. You guys understand? Everything they're saying is the exact opposite. So I spend a little bit more time on this one because I think the the, uh, Fox News version is shorter. You see this is only a two-minute clip. Uh, this was posted about two, three days ago, but I literally could not. I was gone. I took, I took, I took three days off, so I could not not do a segment. <laughs> like this is <laughs> probably the craziest Again. shit you would hear. That's why I say like both of these clips disgust me because you got you heard the liberal way of selling genocide, liberal way of selling Zionism. Now you guys are gonna hear the batshit right wing unapologetic way of selling genocide. Which is why I believe, I don't think most of you guys are going to agree with me when I, when I say I think both are disgusting. I think they're disgusting for different reasons. I think what the liberal way is more effective, like when you have this psyop, we have this pretty woman, right, come on and pretend that she care about liberal vi- values, that she support apartheid and genocide. I think that's more effective. That, I think that's probably why it scares me and frustrates me. This here is not effective. Like I think this shit right here, helps the Palestinian cause because everyone else who's rational mind outside the West hears this shit, CJ, and they like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I let it play because this is gonna be this is probably the craziest shit I ever heard. And I am not exaggerating here. Listen to this clip of Jesse Waters. Uh I don't think we can have a Palestinian state at this point. I've had it with the Palestinians. I've given up on the Palestinians. If I was in Israel, I, I wouldn't be talking about a Palestinian state right now. I don't think Joe Biden should be talking about a Palestinian state right now. And I don't like how people tried to differentiate between the Palestinians and Hamas. To me, I see people with guns. That's Hamas. The people without the guns are the Palestinians. They believe the same thing. The Palestinians hire Hamas to run their government. You pull them. They all love killing Jews. It's in their charter. They say they believe in suicide bombings. Every time a Palestinian refugee goes to another country, it doesn't work out so well for the other country and for those Palestinians. No one wants them. You don't see Egypt opening up their doors. You don't see Jordan opening up. You don't see the Saudis. Why don't they want the Palestinians, Dana? I think we all know why they don't want the Palestinians. And it's not working out having these Palestinians and Hamas right next door to the Israelis. So time is running out. For Netanyahu. I don't know why they're taking so long with this ground offensive. I would have struck, obviously. I have no military experience. <laughs> yeah. There are Jesse Waters unapologetically calling for the genocide of the Palestinian people. And you know how liberals are trying to do this thing like you saw the last statement. She pretty much said if you support Palestinians, you support a mosque. But she does it in a wheezy way where she don't straight out outright say it. She said, well, if you support protest for a free Palestine, you support a mosque. No, Jesse Waters straight up saying, no, every Palestinian is a mosque. All these motherfuckers got a job. <laughs> and y'all, and so you guys understand, Fox News is the most watched corporate news show by far. Jesse Waters has way, thousands of times more influence than we do. So, And you guys wonder why we look at white America as a whole and we're not horrified as fuck. 
Because this is a normal guy. This is a guy walking around. Jesse Wad. Oh my God, he's a guy of great prestige. He's a guy we should respect. <laughs> this guy is as unhinged as it comes. But he's a respectable journalist. He's a respectable person in white America. Meanwhile, we're over here looking at this shit in horror. Black and brown <laughs> people looking at this shit in horror, fam. Yeah. Yes, and then they got yes. the nerve to say our community is violent, CJ. They say, look at the black community. The black community is so violent. You motherfuckers advocate for genocide. And that's normal. This shit is normal. This guy is a respectable, a respectable anchor in America. But we're the violent, we're the violent community, CJ. Because we got people in poverty hustling. He's rich as fuck, advocating for genocide. Comfortable as fuck, advocating for genocide. Like, just out of his passion. He just passionately want them dead. And was he is he is he someone who who is put in a corner? Is he is he someone who viewed as an extremist? Is he banished by white America? No, he's a millionaire paid by white America money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when people are like, oh my god, you see this, you see this random black guy who committed a crime over there? And I'm like, yeah, we don't fuck with them. That's why we support his ass being in prison, right? Meanwhile, our country uplifts this motherfucker to a millionaire because he's a psychopath. Yeah. And you guys don't understand why I have a deep disdain for who our country is? The fact that this guy can even exist? When people mad at Jesse Water, no, I'm mad at the fact this guy can even exist. Any country that can make this guy a millionaire, someone who's respectable, someone who's more respected by even liberals than we are, Liberals think he's, he's a more credible person than we are. He's a more credible source of information than we are. But he's a psychopath. See, Johnny, anything you want to add before I finish? Because, like, this is crazy. No, I saw, I did see the, you know, the whole version. You and I watch a lot of the same. We know where to go to get some of the same. Jesse Waters on Fox. There's a couple of people on Fox you want to watch, even though if it's hard to watch. He's one of the people that's hard to watch because his rhetoric is always this. It's always at this high level, but Palestine, and we talked about this before, Palestine, one of those issues that for us in particular, black people is, man, this is one of those it's issues. This is unhinged. This is, yeah, so crazy. me hearing this, it's funny you said what you said, but cause what I hear is I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing, you know, 19, I'm hearing 1875, yeah. right after supposedly the Emancipation Proclamation. I'm tired of this damn reconstruction. Fuck yeah. this reconstruction. That's why I ended early. This is exactly what happened. I'm tired of this protecting these black people. They're not doing this. They're not doing this. Look, they don't want to work. They don't want to work. They're comparing it to slavery. Remember, this is how we get the whole lazy trope. Because we're not working 16 hours for free, now we're doing 10 hours. That's lazy. So, but anyway, I can go on a rant, but yeah. So this, we, we, this we, is we, what I've heard. This is what I heard, though, Nick. When I'm hearing Jesse Waters, I'm hearing the explanation of Jim Crow uh, and yeah, and, and and black codes. That's what I'm hearing. But go ahead. Do you remember when the analogy I did? Uh, who, what State Department Google was covering? I forgot who it was. Anthony Blinken, probably. I think it was Blinken. Could have been Anthony. I told you, I, I told you guys that um, that. Blinken is the Joker, fam. You know what I mean? Joker, uh, the kingpin is Biden. Like you know the, the these big villains they make in comic book here in comic books, yeah. Who usually have unrealistic villainous uh, motivations. This guy is the Joker. Like this is a monologue that if I heard in like the MCU, <laughs> like if I watched the Marvel and I saw a villain give a monologue like this, I'm like, yep, I'm out of here. This is one real looking Friday. That's Joker. Say, That's the guy with Cooper. all the makeup, saying yeah. crazy, crazy shit, twirling a gun in his hand. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's him. <laughs> so do you guys want to listen to the Joker speech again? We're almost done. Like, you got, they're clipping out long. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Listen to the Joker monologue. Like, these, I view them as the Joker. They're Lex Luthor. Like, the Lex Luthor and Joker, they're not realistic characters. We know that. That's why, that's why it's a comic book. That's why it's a movie. But who are the people who are really that fucking evil? Th this guy. You guys will hear, like, just, if you guys don't believe me, imagine a Lex Luthor voice over this guy. Right? Do, like, in your mind, dub over the Joker over this guy's uh, speech right now. Tire Hamas to run their government. You pull them. They all love killing Jews. It's in their charter. 
They say they believe in suicide bombings. Every time a Palestinian refugee goes to another country, it doesn't work out so well for the other country and for those Palestinians. No one wants them. You don't see Egypt opening up their doors. You don't see Jordan opening up. You don't see the Saudis. Why don't they want the Palestinians, Dana? I think we all know why they don't want the Palestinians, and it's not working out having these Palestinians and Hamas right next door to the Israelis. So time is running out for Netanyahu. I don't know why they're taking so long with this ground offensive. I would have struck, obviously. I have no military experience, <laughs> yeah. but I'm talking about there's a certain amount of goodwill that's built up. There's a certain amount of political capital that the West will allow Netanyahu in the wake of this horrific attack. Every day that goes by and they don't move in on the ground and root out these terrorists in their little labyrinth under and in, in the command and control, the decapitation strikes. It's another day where the United Nations, where the Arab League and some of these skittish uh, American politicians are going to say, you know what, let's have a ceasefire. Let's let's just wait. Let, you know, let's stop. Let's just stop. And if they don't go in hard and they don't go in decisively and they don't have the time to go in and root out these terrorists, then they're not going to do it. And then we're going to be back again five years later. There's going to be another horrific attack here. So this is the slave owner who's saying that fucking slavery boat. That guy is a motherfucking problem. No, we need somebody to go into that slave quarters and get that motherfucker out right now. You scared? You're going to be squirmish because there's kids in there yeah. and we got to behead the kids. This is who he would be. This is who he would be. You guys Disgusting. know what he's saying, right? What, I, I mean, you guys are smart enough to pick it up. I know you guys did, but what he's saying here is so crazy. Because he mentioned the skittish politicians, not many of them. You got to know the Senate, I'm covering this tomorrow. The Senate unanimously voted in support of Israel, including Bernie Sanders, and said they had the right to defend themselves, meaning they got the right to commit genocide. So what he says in the beginning, not really true, but look at his, his point. He says there's a certain amount of political capital that was built up. What is he saying there? He's saying that so many people were shot by October 7th, we got a shield in order to commit genocide. And he's saying, bro, Netanyahu, you better hurry the fuck up because there, eventually people are going to wake up to the amount of people that you're killing. So you need to fucking get it done. You need to uh, finish the final solution. You need to finish the final solution before people wake up and, for, and realize what's going on. That is what he's saying. He said, hurry up before people conscious catch up to them. Right. Which once, once again, his premise is wrong because people are only the U.S. and U.K. are supporting Israel. Like people are condemning them in mass. Right. So he's wrong on the premise, that, but that's what he's saying. And, and what's even more unhinged is we know why Benjamin and Yahoo's not doing the ground invasion yet. You did a great breakdown. This one of my days off. You had you did one of your segments talking about how they worried about they're gonna get their ass kicked by Hezbollah. Yeah, yeah. In a mosque, and they they wondering how much the U.S. is gonna support them. So there's actually a technical neocon reason for why they're not <laughs> going on the ground. But this psychopath found a way to criticize Netanyahu to his right. As Netanyahu is committing a genocide. Nigga, that's a gold trophy if I ever seen it. You know, <laughs> that's an accomplishment. You somehow <laughs> criticize someone to their right as they're committing a genocide. Now, to write out this segment here, I told you guys, I think most of you guys have viewed the Fox segment as the most unhinged, right? And I understand why you view that way. But you guys mentioned how, you see how he mentioned how he, mm. he brings up Hamas. And supporting a mosque, and if you support the ceasefire, you're supporting a mosque. That's the same premise that the liberal woman is saying. You, you see how he spread the lies about beheading babies and all this stuff, the stuff that we debunk. That's the same lie that the liberal woman is, is saying. Yeah. You guys see how he paints a ceasefire in such a negative light? That's the same way the liberal woman said. The liberal woman got mad at the people who were protesting. What are the people protesting for? A ceasefire. If you call for a ceasefire, now it's you evil and you are against her right to exist now. So both of them are saying the same thing, fam. Jesse Waters is unhinged, and he is the least effective messenger. Because as I show you, when most people see this clip, and this clip went viral worldwide, yeah, he's not effective because people see him, they're like, Jesus Christ. They see the <laughs> beautiful Iranian woman, they're like, oh, man, what? What? It's not liberal to support liberation? Damn, you look like, yeah, okay, okay, I see that. <laughs> you see who's... Well, see, that's just my personal opinion. Like, I, if you guys disagree with that, that's fine. I view one as being way more effective, and I view both of them having the same message. That's 
uh, the propaganda report for today. I went over it a little bit long because I might go live tomorrow. So, CJ, I'll actually pass it to you because I, I have um, – this statement would be too long. I might go live tomorrow to make up for a fact I didn't do Nick and Knight because I'm, I'm going to cover how U.S. bombed Syria once again. <laughs> once again. And it, and Biden – the you guys have no, no idea how unhinged Biden is. I'm just doing a short monologue to cover the statement, but I'm going to cover this in detail tomorrow. You have Biden that essentially threatening war with Iran because Iran, they are accusing Iran of attacking U.S. proxies. And the way the media is covering this, they're saying, and I watched quite a few statements, but they're like, Iran attacking U.S. Iran proxies are attacking U.S. soldiers in other countries. <laughs> That's how they report. <laughs> they're attacking U.S. soldiers in other countries. And, I, and I'm like, what countries are you talking about? Because I read a few stories that like other, other countries. You, they're attacking soldiers. In, no, they're attacking them in Iraq and Syria because the United States is stealing the wheat from Syria and it's still 80% of the oil production. So the people who don't like that is attacking U.S. soldiers for obvious reasons. So the U.S., without any evidence, is blaming Iran for it. And now they're threatening war with Iran. And now they just ban Iranian-backed groups in Syria. It's too long of a segment for me right now today. I won't, I won't get to your segment, CJ. I know we probably got hard, okay. hard out. But I'm, I'm planning to go live tomorrow because I have that story. One thing I do want to show you, not even a... Then what about the Bernie and a John Kirby story? You doing those tomorrow too? Do you have a Bernie story? Um, actually, that yeah, let's, story? Let's, that, could, let's, that could have been my yeah. story. Yeah, we can do. We I can have. Do I have story. another. I have another sixty. I went earlier today because I knew we might go longer. So if you wanted yeah. to do either the John Kirby story, you say you had. Yeah, I do. I do the, the John. Story. I do the John Kirby story. Either one of John those. Kirby. Yeah, either one of those is fine with me. And then I can do mine. Mine is not maybe t- about twenty five minutes. And I got another sixty minutes if you know if you whatever you got so whatever you want to do yeah yeah I probably got another thirty minutes or so um, so I'm a um, we can do mine and then I think the I'm trying one house oh, do you, are you gonna do the Bernie segment next what's that, what's no that so next? what I was gonna do was cover the Peter Dow resigning and yeah let's go that story first and I'll figure it out yeah. <laughs> let, I'll pass yeah. you let's do that story first. I read a few suggestions. Yeah. You can do the story, and then I take it from there. Because uh, okay. some of the stuff I may cover tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of Nick and Knight or Nick on Saturday. I should say. Uh, so let me read a few super chats. I'll pass to you for the next segment. Um, I'll just get to what well, I leave off out here. Uh, then for the one nine nine, her accent was strong to be an American citizen. Um, I think, she, yeah, they gave her background before. Like she won the she won the Iranian refugees. Like many of the people that fled, yeah, like you know the how you yeah, the background. The many people who fled Cuba, the the bourgeoisie, the people who fled Cuba, now they speak out against the Cuban regime in order. And the same people who claim they support Cuba and they 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 want the best for the Cuban people. These same people like oh, I want the best for the Cuban people, but we shouldn't let the blockade. Like that is what these white Cubans will argue. The same, and that's what these Iranian people will argue. We didn't hear her full fleshed out opinions on this, but there are many of these Iranian refugees, the people who care so much about the Iranian people, who support U.S. sanctions on Iran. Teacher, how does that make sense? You're from Iran. <laughs> you claim you care about the Iranian people, but you support Joe Biden stealing $5 billion of their money? You support the United States putting sanctions on them? It's always weird. Uh, I'll read the last two Super Chats. Uh I think we got yeah two more. That might be one that's triggering for you. I'm sure you'll you'll figure it out when you get to it. They're gonna be one that's one of those super chats gonna be uh, triggering for you yeah, in a minute when you thank, get to yeah, it. Thank you for twenty bucks. <laughs> Great show today. Uh, thank you. Even though the clips from Fox and MSNBC make me want to vomit, I don't understand how people watch this stuff and think they're getting real news. That why like I, you guys see why I said why the United States is the most propagandized country in the world. Because I showed you both sides. The progressives, and it, we did a segment a while ago where uh, one of the dumbest people in independent media, Emma Viglin, she was like, the people who really believe there's a difference between MSNBC and, MSNBC and Fox, they're delusional. I, you, I just showed you guys that. a clip of MSNBC <laughs> saying the same damn thing. We showed you guys a clip of MSNBC being unhinged all the damn time. But there are people, progressive people, who believe that MSNBC is the legitimate news. It's insane. Uh, then for 10 bucks. It is precisely exactly because you don't and will never support Democrats that you feel rage you do. It is precisely exactly because they do support Democrats. They do sleepily comfort. What? 
comfortably sleep. Is it the soup you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, did you say what I think you said? Yeah, yes, yes. It's got to be parody. Is this parody? <laughs> so what, I, what I'm confused on, what, what I'm confused uh, on is the goal of a Democratic <laughs> Party voter. You know what I mean? So I thought one of the reasons why you guys had Trump derangement syndrome was because you guys opposed the Trump border wall, for example. So then Biden takes office and he's finishing the Trump border wall, Eric. So what exactly do you accomplish? I thought liberals didn't like Trump and the Republicans because they support the police state. Now you got Joe Biden, Democrats that funding Democrat uh, funding the police and ISO so historic levels. I thought Donald Trump was the one who was going to provoke and get us closer to World War III. It is Joe Biden that is executing the plan, as I just explained, to launch a war with Iran, something that the Trump administration couldn't pull off. You had the Biden administration that escalated against China in a way that Trump couldn't pull off. You got him creating these war that Trump couldn't do. So I don't understand the objective. If the objective was to get rid of Trumpism, you failed, Eric. And not only did you fail to get rid of Trumpism, you enabled a more dangerous version of that. You enabled a, a more dangerous, competent version of Trumpism. Joe Biden is getting everything done that Trump couldn't get done. He being a more effective a driller. He drilled more than Donald Trump. Uh, he got the Willow Project done. So I don't know what your objective is. And if I was someone who had Trump derangement syndrome because of what Trump has done, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night knowing I voted for those same policies. That's why your comment don't even make sense on faith value. Because what exactly did you accomplish by voting for Democrat? But I don't have to spend much more time on it. Uh, I wish that would trigger. I'm just slightly amused because I don't understand people think that way. Yeah. Uh, but see, I pass to you. Uh, for the next story, yeah. Uh, go on. Uh, all right, so uh, let's get to this one here, and I'm gonna first show you a tweet, and then get to. I'm I'm meshing two segments. I'm putting them together because if you hadn't ha had a chance, and I guess I'll start here. I'll start with this video first, just so we can get through, skip through this quicker, um, for the sake of time. If you hadn't had a chance, Nick. <laughs> Ron Paclone had Margaret Kimberly on and um, talked about a bunch of different things because, of course, she's a great mind to lean on foreign policy wise. That's one of the reasons why we bring her on ourselves. But she also chimed in on Cornell West. Um, he also asked her that question. So let's listen. And I'm tying this with the news of Peter Dow resigning. So I'm tying these two stories together here speaks very very highly of you you are a green party member yep. do you agree with cornell west's recent decision to not seek the green party nomination i do not i was i was very very disappointed i thought it could have been huge politically for the country for the green party for the left in general for him but for whatever reason I get the feeling he hadn't really thought it through and it was something he wasn't really ready to do. And uh, so I was extremely disappointed. The, the Democrats, by the way, in New York State uh, have gotten the Greens off the ballot. We don't have a ballot line anymore. Andrew Cuomo, one of his parting gifts, mm -hmm. um, they raised the threshold for getting nominating petition signatures and it's this huge number that we can't reach. Um, and absent someone like, even with a big name person like West, it still would have been hard, but it, it gave us uh, some possibility. Uh, you know, all the issues of that the Green Party stands for, that um, uh, people want and agree with. Uh, I, there was something about having this well-known person that there were people I was surprised who said, I would vote for Cornell West. I was kind of pleasantly surprised. And now we're back to square one. Um, uh, who would that be? The people whose names have been mentioned are people I don't want. I, I don't want to spend time talking about people I don't want. No, sure. But sure. Um, uh, it, it's so we're back to square one, uh, scrambling, and lot, and New York is not alone. Other states have gotten the greens off the ballot. So trying to the, the biggest of the, you know, the, we say third parties as if there's only three, but the biggest non-duopoly party 
that had the uh, the grassroots support and the ability to get people on the ballot. Um, you know, now it's like, who's going to run? Who should that be? Um, you know, and um, I, and I think West and I, I appreciate his, you know, he gave me a blurb for my book, which is something everybody wanted, right? Cornell West blurb for your book. And he's a very, he's a very kind person. He's very generous with his time. I think he's a, he's really a grassroots person and he'll turn up in places you wouldn't expect the, you know, small, you know, local groups giving support for some issue. And I respect him for that, but I wish he had either thought it through before he did it or had just stayed in and worked, you know, the bumps of something new and it was new for him. And I, I suspect that, you know, for a person, he's not a young man for someone of his age, uh, to, um, have this new experience of a political campaign. I mean, I can't speak for him, but it was personally disappointing. And I think it's a lost opportunity for uh, left politics and for black politics. too. So what I had to say, and then I'm gonna, he has another great follow-up and then we'll close this part and I'll get to the tweet. Um, is that Nick again, RBN comes out and says stuff, get ahead of the of the pack because we believe something strongly and we take the heat. But it's very satisfying, Nick, to have people like Margaret Kimberly, who we consider an elder to us, to have people like Ajamu Baraka come on here and say essentially the same thing that she's saying here that we said uh, before people like Sh uh, Shama Sawat, who who people look up to, when these people come out and confirm the things that we've been saying, and she's confirming it here, is because if you listen closely, she said, "I don't really think he understood what he was getting into here," and it's that's clearly what has gone on. The selection of the People's Party as your as your initial vehicle to begin this process, sort of sort of gave us that indication, but we all thought his naivete would be, was gone or helped by being on the Green Party and have people like Margaret Kimberly, Ajamu Baraka, and Jill Stein in your ear. Yeah, it was about, the, it was about the movement and, and that's the great disappointment because uh, we told Dr. Cornel West on our show, essentially, why it's extremely important for him to run as a Democrat and why it was a good move at the time when we had our conversation. And the second that Dr. Cornell West decided not to run as a Green, it was like all interest lost. Not only because you're not going to be on the ballot in my state, the Green Party candidate would, it because I'm not even ignoring you as a hero. And it seemed like he don't understand the assignment, as I said before. Like, do you really think we was annoying you as a hero? You was here to boost a movement, Right. So let's say your hypothetical independent run somehow get 5%, even though you're not going to be on the ballot. Where the fuck is that 5% federal money going, CJ? You guys understand, if you got 5% in the Green Party, that money go down ballot and will help other Greens get elected. Right. It could possibly help us start a Green Mutual Aid Organization. But now where are it going? No down ballot, down, no down ballot candidates. Where, where will it go? It will go just to start the process of creating what already is a Green Party. Let's say Dr. Cornel West get five percent. Then it will start to build the process of getting on the ballots. Then they will have down. They will have a down ballot organization. Right. Then they will be at the point where the Green Party is already at. Instead of starting where the Green Party is at, radically taking it over and, and improving the politics, which is what we were trying to do, take over completely, turn the Green Party to an unapologetically pro-black, anti-imperialist, socialist party. That is what we wanted, and that would have been extremely powerful. You had uh, Lion Cosgrove that said he would have 100%. He, yeah. he was a, a libertarian. He was, I interviewed him not too long ago. He said he 100% would vote for a socialist who's anti-war, anti-imperialist. And that is the pill of what we could have brought him. But he abandoned the movement because he didn't want to go through the work. That's essentially what he said. He didn't want to go through the work of going through the Green Party. He didn't want to go through the work of working within the organization. So that was deeply disappointing, especially when we told him the benefit of this, because we don't believe in electoral politics as a route of liberation. The only benefit of this is building a movement. He was like, now nah, I'm good. <laughs> Go ahead, CJ. <laughs> yeah, so he, he has a great um, follow-up, and 
again, is just confirming another point that RBN was out saying out front. So let's listen. I, I agree with everything you just said. But when you say he didn't think it through, like, do you mean running with the Greens or do you mean running for president in general or a little bit of both? I think running in general. Um, I I suspect, and I have not talked to him, but I've, you know, heard some things that, you know, this, you have to have a kind of discipline and you're in, uh, you're the boss, but you also have to listen to other people who run a campaign before. Um, and I think that was hard for him to do. And it would have meant. Well, you know what I just heard there? I heard the same thing that you mentioned weeks ago that he seems hard like he doesn't want to listen to anybody because he has a complex that he's a Harvard Princeton professor. Yeah, he lectures. He's the one who do the lecture, not us. Right. That's what she just said here. That it this could be Now she's nicing it up. But this is what she says that he, maybe, you know, he's finding it hard. He's used to being in the lecturing position and finding it, that could be a hard thing and she's going to go on and say even more that we've said, and I'll stop it once she gets to that part. It meant a lot of travel. It would have meant, um, you know, so if he said something, tweeted something years ago, that's not in keeping with the Green Party, you know, just as an example, now you've got to explain yourself. It's like, well, did you... You mean Cornell West didn't want to have accountability? Because you tweeted some milk toast ass bullshit, and then they're going to say... What did you mean by this? He doesn't want to have to do that. That sounds so PMC to me. That sounds yeah. so PMC. And if that's what got you to leave the Green Party, this is the reason why, Nick, in some of the subsequent interviews, oh, yeah, I won't go into detail. He's just broadly talking about things. They needed me to do this and do that. Now, yeah, I don't need to go into detail because if we heard the detail, if we heard shit like this, you mean they wanted you to explain a tweet? You mean they wanted you to show up to a debate? You mean they wanted you to earn the actual nomination and we're supposed to be mad about that? No, sir, Mr. West. No, sir. But let's listen a little more to uh, what she says. She says a third thing and then I'll stop. She said a third thing, Nick, that we said before. Do you not agree with that then? Or do you know this is not something Greens can go with now? Um, so there were some complications like that. And I think it was um, uh, it was something he had not considered. He, the reality, the reality of a presidential or any political campaign is quite different. If you have a campaign manager, you, you know, the candidate is the boss, but the campaign manager gets to tell you what to, that's, that's part of their job. Do this, don't do that. Talk to this one, don't talk to that one. So we get here, I'm going to come back to this. The campaign manager, that's part of their job, Nick, to tell you what to do. And who was his campaign manager, Nick, that told him to do this terrible strategy? Who was that? Oh, that was just Peter the same Peter Dow that just resigned, Nick. The same Peter yeah. Dow. I mean, this is, is I, I just can't believe how quickly he's shameful and how quickly he has decided to resign. And I'll read it here. Here is Corn. And this is the thing. Cornell West had to announce it before the, the subject was broached. So Cornell West announces it here. I am very sorry about the resignation of brother Peter Dow based on his health. Hmm, he left another campaign, Nick, with a health <laughs> reason. Um, so you, you, you have health issues. You, so you had health issues. <laughs> you had health issues. Eli, Clown I'm going to sign up for this movement. <laughs> Without, Peter shit. Dow is like, bro, this was the easiest infiltration I ever did in my life. <laughs> bro, Peter, he like, bro, that was so fucking easy. Can you guys imagine the 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 relief of the establishment at the how how the how much discipline, how much revolutionary discipline this campaign lacked? They're like, man, I can't believe how easy it was to infiltrate and destroy this man's campaign. We was almost sweating for a second when he went on R RBN and they started telling yeah. him how to run a movement. And we was worried. 
then he then listen to them. I'm like, damn, he already peered down. We're like, whoo, we good, we good. <laughs> like the establishment <laughs> destroyed his campaign, infiltrated campaign effortlessly, effortlessly. And now, after seeing the failures of social democrats, and Dr. Cornel West had a lot of anti-communism in them. I told you guys this in the group chat before. Like, I'm pretty damn radicalized, fam. I don't believe that social democrats are equipped for this fight. Even in it, I don't believe that Dr. Corno West has any ill intentions. There's some people that say yeah. that. I don't believe that at all. I think he's a well-intentioned, and I think he's a good man. That's my personal opinion. Social democrats in the PMC class are not equipped for this fight. They don't have the revolutionary discipline. They believe in, they are still caught up in too much anti-communist, uh, Western chauvinistic propaganda. And this is stuff that communists had critiques of Dr. West for a, a long time. So of course he faced plant planted. After seeing the failure of the Bernie movement, Justice Democrats, all these fake sellouts, I legitimately believe they're not equipped. In fact, they are only embolden the establishment. Because they're so confused, flopping around like a fish with no plans. That's what we said early on. That probably pissed a lot of people off. Dr. Cornel West gave a gift to the Democrat Party. When he let the Green Party, we hired Peter Dow. When he we inspired this campaign, because it was a fantastic moment to have a third party candidate. And his his effort was effortlessly infiltrated. Um and we knew something was up when they were looking for PMC people to hire. Remember when people yeah. were, like, were like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why are you running a campaign as an outsider exactly as the insiders do? Anyway, I can run on this all day, but go ahead, CJ. It is very Let me just finish a tweet. Um, he says, I sincerely pray for him and his precious family and thank him for his service to my campaign. I mean, my question is, does, does, does Dr. West see what has just happened like can he see it or or is he that blind that he can't see that he went from the he went from the people's party to the green party and you had great minds with you just think about it if you're a person and you go let me see when did i have the most greatest most smartest people around me oh was when i was with the green party like i'm just trying to just deductive reasoning to see if he's able to get to the conclusion where this, you know, where this sort of went wrong and understand, Nick, I did a stream on a segment on this and it was when he went on bad faith and asked some answer, some questions. And he said, Peter Dow was the one who gave him the pros and cons about running with the green or going independent. Oh, now, of course. He said that Peter Dow and I zoomed in on that point in that segment. Peter Dow was the one who gave him the pros and cons. Now, if if Cornell West ended up saying, I'm going to run independent, isn't it logical to believe, Nick, that the pros and cons, that the pros were better? The pros convinced him, obviously. Yes. The yes. pros didn't leave. So the guy who convinced you to leave is now have left the ship? <laughs> like... Like, how are you even going to navigate this? He told you to leave an apparatus to go with no apparatus. Here that like he easy work. A campaign manager. He doesn't have a campaign manager, and now he doesn't even have advisors like Jill Stein and Ajamu. Like, what is this? He's just flailing out in the open now at this point. It is amazing, bro. and Peter Dow is a master at this. Go ahead. I, apparently, he is, bro. He, uh, like we this called it. No like, there's no other. There's no other thing I can say about this other than we fucking called it. There were so many people who thought we was overreacting to the Peter Dow. He changed. Like, what? Why would you put him in such an important position? He did exactly. What, he like, thank you, brother West. You made it very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, them RBN, them RBN brothers, they was on it for a second. I'm glad you listened to me instead of them. This is very comical. I didn't. I'm oh, glad he you put said something together. about us. Just... That's why I'm getting to now. He's he actually he actually he actually mentions us. I, okay, I think I'm getting to it around here. He says something like into the into the Twitter people who've never been or something like that. He mentions us. I'm just trying to find it, Nick. So 
bear with me. It could be part of this here, but let's let's mention this because this is part of the segment. Yeah, yeah, this is part of the segment. It says, "Working for Cornell West has been an incredible honor. He is one of the great minds of our time, with a lifetime dedicated to people. A true jazz man. Yes, I burnt out and need rest." Nick, <laughs> you just started, bro. Are you Nick. fucking serious? Are you serious? Yeah, and then he bring up the fact that he worked on two campaigns in cycle. Unbelievable. I can't uh, I even believe this. this so. <laughs> I can't. I cannot this even believe this. <laughs> I cannot. Even. No, no, I haven't seen this wow. either. So, so just to get clear, I haven't seen, <laughs> I just know because somebody told me that Peter Dow had made several statements subsequent that I hadn't wow. put into the segment. So I knew to search for it. I hadn't read it though. I cannot believe he said he burnt out. Dude, you have literally been on a campaign for like two weeks, three weeks. Oh, this motherfucker just started on a campaign he knows doesn't end to November. You My know what God. I mean? Like, like let, let me try to make an analogy. I, usually that's CJ and JB thing, right? But I used to run a lot back in my back in my martial arts days. Like sometimes you'll set a goal, right? And you don't reach it. They like, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna try and run five miles today. Then you might make three and a half miles. You're like, man, that was a good try. Unfortunately, I set my standard too high. Imagine if you set the goal of running five miles and then you made it one lap around the track. You made it a quarter of a mile, <laughs> and you're like, nigga, I'm done. You'll be like, bro, it's absurd that you thought you can run five miles when you can't even run a quarter of a mile. That's what Perry Dow just did. He said a five-mile run. This motherfucker ran one lap and gassed out. Now everyone's like, why you even enter the five-mile sprint? You guys see how absurd it is for people who believe this is an innocent mistake? I absolutely do not believe this is a, after dropping out of, of Marianne Wilson campaign. For a, going on what I've seen in the chat for his mother health reasons, knowing that you slightly burned out, do you join another campaign that you know is not going to be over to the general election? I do absolutely do not believe this at all. At all. Yeah. So he goes what on that, and says, that? I... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to read it. I burnt out and need... Rest and need rest from the extreme stress of two campaigns in one cycle, all while dealing with my family health issue and PTSD from my childhood in war in a war zone. It, this is classic uh, car salesman. This is classic God. salesmanship here. That and it's so bad. I train salespeople for uh, Verizon and Bank of America. It's just this is bad salesmanship here. Like if a person who understands sales like that, I can, that's, that's weaselly sort of salesing that he's doing. But anyway, let me, let me continue because Nick, there's another tweet where he's going ham at us. I, I, I'm going to get to that. But my mission of challenging <laughs> the duopoly continues. I left both campaigns in a much better shape, uh. in a much better shape than when I joined. When their highest poll, uh, when their highest poll numbers and their financial stable, I'm proud of that and thrilled to have met so many amazing people powering their campaign onward. This is such a freaking weaselly statement made by here, but Nick he doubles down on the part where he said he left them, and he. Let me just bring it up and and you you tell me uh what you think about it and I I did find it and here is it here is what he also says truth to armchair twitter quarterbacks who keep questioning my motives here's a reality check I saved the Cornell West campaign and Marianne Williamson campaign for what for that matter from financial insolvency and complete internal disarray why is that supposed to be a good thing I'm, I'm i'm just throwing this out there right the fact we've been arguing that we shouldn't be wasting our time and resources on electoral politics and the dr cornell west campaign is showing us exactly why right we should be investing our time and resources for people who got their shit together so apparently if dr cornell west can't put a team together and do this without having this infiltrator peer down. And they're so, they have this 
messy, sloppy organization, why should we as workers invest into it? So one thing you did was just propped up and resuscitate this dead, failed project, apparently, and now you're trying to sell it to us like you did something amazing. But her, the claim initially that he left Dr. Cornell West a campaign in a, in a better position is factually untrue. If Dr. Cornell West would literally hire anyone else, they would be in a better position. Can you cost them how much support? So there's so right. many logical flaws here, but I'll let you continue. Like there's so many, like this is this is pure cult. Like I can't, like this is cult over his the failed project here. But let's continue. Yeah, because it, it, the reason, so for, let me just sort of sum up what of sort of what he's saying. He's saying I came in and pro- sort of professionalized it. What he's saying is I came in and made your organization look more like a corporate duopoly ran organization, and he thinks he deserved credit for that. Yeah, that is what he's saying. Now the problem is the professional managerial class who was at running this campaign. It sounds like it's Cornell West decided to go the PMC route instead of the the movement route because why are you organizing it, organizing it that way instead of organizing it like a movement? You should be reaching out to movement organizers as people to be part of your campaign. Absolutely. Because again, you're setting it up to run after November 2024. That's your first mistake. But he continues... I created the solid infrastructure, stabilized funds, built effective teams. This is, you see what I'm saying? He's just giving you the detail of what I'm saying. He made the campaign look like a corporate duopoly campaign. Yep, you That's just all with, he did. You're like, bro, I did, exact, I, I did the same thing I did to the Hillary Clinton campaign. Like, why why, why are we trying to run it like the Hillary Clinton campaign? here? And I'm, I'm asking people to show me the evidence of this guy winning elections. <laughs> Like that was my initial complaint, right? Like, where is the evidence that this guy is such a great campaign manager that we should compromise our value to high? And, and remember the analogy I said at the time: imagine there was this motherfucker who was the Michael Jordan campaign manager. I mean, this nigga is six and zero yeah. in elections. Yeah, he a little bit capitalist. Yeah, he don't agree with us. Then we had to kind of have a conversation. Like, oh, this motherfucker. I know we don't like this motherfucker, but he hit home runs. Don't no, they, yeah. they, 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 they can't even say that. There's no conversation because that was the argument they were using. They would say, and this is the the people who were defending Cornell West. They would say, well, there's no one available other than Peter Dow. There's no one else who's effective at managing a campaign. My response was, what's the evidence that he's effective? What's the evidence of that? Let's continue. And then he says, importantly. Dr. West tweets statements and political strategy decisions were entirely his own. This is where we get into psychological playing here, games and um, wordplay. Because because if I come to you, Nick, and I said this in a stream, if if I come to you and I go, you know nothing about a subject, and I'm the one coming to you and saying, this is the pros about a subject you don't know about. This is the cons about the subject you don't know about. And you make a decision. You're under the impression you made the decision. You did not make the decision. I made the decision by explaining pros and cons to you on a subject you don't have any idea about. I made the decision. But that's how, you see what I'm saying? This is a psychological game. Peter Dow knows exactly what I just said. But look how he's trying to frame it. He's trying to use identity politics. And frankly, it's repulsive to suggest a black man of his intellect and stature is not making his own decisions. This guy is such a slimy sort of salesman. This is the sort of salesman that if I had him in a class, he and this he and I would not get along because I would see the sliminess in your tactics and I would say stuff shit about that shit. And let me continue so we can move on here. My only policy role was to help refine and launch his platform written by his policy director, which had received praise from many in his many uh, quarters. 
people who spew BS about me don't have the slightest idea the mess I inherited at the Williamson and West campaign and the tireless work I did to get both campaigns on track to challenge the duopoly at a toll to my own well-being. I, I, I got, I, I, let me, he said something about, about Dr. Dr. Jill Sign, so I'll say this, I, I was going to stop it. Another fact, my personal beliefs are significantly to the left of both candidates I work for this cycle. And we're supposed to believe that. Uh, finally, I remain deeply grateful to Dr. Jill Stein for bringing me Dr. West's campaign and to him for giving me the opportunity to support this mission. This guy is one of the worst, despicable, still running the same game, but just from a different lens. Instead of tearing apart the left from a campaign point of view, He's tearing apart the left as if he's part of the organization, as he's part of the, the community. And yeah. that's who Peter Dow is. And the professional managerial class largely have allowed him back into this community to c commit these sort of uh, policy crimes, these strategic crimes that I would say on the left. And anybody who buys that, like, are you anybody buying this stuff that he's saying? Apparently... There is, but not me um, and not um, anybody in our camp. But any final words? And if you if you I can stay if you had another one. But if we yeah. wanted to close, we can close. Um, Either way, I'm good. Either way, yeah. I'm good. Um, I know we have uh, the Bernie story. Uh, I, I got to get going because uh, it's about we can go and right? just push yeah. it. We can push it till tomorrow. Well, we push it. Cover it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to cover I'm going to cover the Bernie thing tomorrow. Um. My plan tomorrow, I'm going to cover Biden, Biden, Syria. And I, and the reason why they wanted to cover Bernie thing, because there are a lot of things I want to tie to that, because you had Bernie supporters and Bernie fans. And feel free to stay. If you, you can cover it if you want to as well. We had these Bernie supporters who made this video begging Bernie Sanders uh, yeah. to uh, be a rational human being, essentially. Bernie, can you please stop supporting genocide? Bernie. <laughs> We believe in you. So then Bernie's response to that was to support a Senate resolution that condemned anyone who supported Free Palestine as Hamas supporters and anti-Semites. The Senate voted 97, or was it 93? One of them. 97 to 0. No senator objected to support the state of Israel, labeled people who protest against Israel as anti-Semite, and Bernie supported that. So I won't go there in detail. I don't want to rush in. The reason I say that is because it's 2.30. I'm kind of I'm tired. I want to rush through it tired. So I want to make sure I do the segment justice. You also have John Kirby and Biden repeating the same exact rhetoric you heard from uh, George W. Bush uh, when it came to the Rocky slaughter. The same rhetoric you hear from Nazis. All these, you need people just denying casualty counts. Uh, so I'm going to cover that. A lot of unhinged nonsense from John Kirby. Uh, so I'm going to cover that tomorrow as well. Um there are okay, I'll be watching. I probably watch. I'm probably not going to join. Just I'm probably going to take a break, just like you. I took one yesterday. I'll probably take one tomorrow, yeah. unless some crazy drop. I won't be joining, but I will be watching because you just dropped news on me. I'm always behind on on some of this stuff. I didn't know Bernie Sanders supported this resolution that you just said. So oh, that's yes, freaking yeah. devastating. So you had former staffers. I did hear about the first part you said. Former staffers basically saying. Please, Bernie, will you please do yeah. the basic thing that you could do uh, as a leftist? And he basically said, fuck you guys to, to those people. Yeah, that why, that's why I didn't want to split those up, because I think those tie together pretty well. Yeah. This is just a spoiler, maybe preview to tomorrow. Uh, but I saw this tweet from Michael Tracy. The Senate just unanimously adopted a resolution condemning pro-Palestine student protesters as in solidarity with Hamas and anti-Semitic. The resolution calls to fully and completely support Israel and its war on Gaza. Everyone from Bernie Sanders to Rand Paul voted for it. So Bernie Sanders staffers was like, 
hey, Bernie, can you please stop supporting genocide? And then Bernie, like, shut the fuck up, you anti Semite. <laughs> you're the one condemning you, you fucking Hamas supporter. <laughs> so, that's kind of a preview. That's a sad one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good preview. Cool. That's a anyway, good preview. <laughs> I, uh, I'll read the last few super chats that came in, then we can get out of here. Yeah, then we can get out of um, here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Dave Ford 499, Ali Diaz. Uh, imagine if Peter Dow had to get a regular people job, he wouldn't make it. Most people can't take vacation in this country. That's a great point. More PMC tears, please. That's a fucking fantastic point. Like, I just got to gotta take a break. Like, bro, you sign up for a goddamn job, bro. Just, <laughs> a very important job. Like, that's so that's exposes him is PMC. Absolutely, man. I volunteered to be part of the Bernie campaign. And fam, I knocked on thousands of doors. Like, if you ask the people that I was around the last week of South Carolina, I was exhausted, fam. I was so burned out that last week. I, I think I even missed it on my show at the time. I'm like, man, I'm fucking tired, yeah. bro. And did I quit? I didn't go home. I, fu- I left. I quit my job. I was cross. I was fucking hundreds of miles from my home, right? I didn't quit. That idea is ridiculous to us. But PMCs, I guess they can do that. That's a great point. I didn't consider that. Uh, but thank you for five bucks. I think that we we uh I think we covered this earlier. Didn't Joe Stein hire Peter Dow or was she lying? Uh yeah, I think she I put she him on him. to him. She didn't yeah. hire, but she put him, she, they, she connected him. him. Yeah. Yeah, because she don't make hiring decisions as far as far as I'm concerned. So she made the suggestion, and Dr. Cornell West made a decision, which is to CJ's point earlier. Uh, we're not denying Dr. Cornell West agency as a free black man. That's ridiculous. But someone's in your ear, someone influencing these decisions. So you, when you hired Pierre Dow, that wasn't 100% your decision. Someone had to influence you for that, right? Joe Stein influenced you, and then you made that decision. The same way that Pierre Dow infiltrated the, the campaign and influenced you to make a lot of dumbass move, dumb moves. And then Pierre Dow said, well, technically he made a decision. <laughs> so that, that was a great point you made earlier, CJ. Um, Besides Dow, there were some other Dem Party infiltrators that got into the campaign, likely with Nina Turner's influence. There may be a way to salvage a Green Party run. They tried to reconnect with West. We can all make mistakes. And the Green Party is still, they still running. They still got the primary popping off. They're still planning on announcing candidates. But I was very specific on the wing of the Green Party that I wanted to work with. I wanted to work with the Joe Stein wing of the party, the 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 wing of the party that not big pharma simps, right? The ones who don't demand workers be fired because they won't inject a, a experimental vaccine into them, for example. I want the Green Party that's against the Ukraine war like Joe Stein. If there's any trace of the Holly Hawkins wing of the Green Party, which another this is another reason why Dr. Cornell West leading that party is tra- tragic, because Dr. Cornell West was a rejection of the Holly Hawkins politics. And having Dr. Right. Cornell West in, it would have utterly destroyed any influence that Howie had. That's why they were, uh, Howie wasn't running after Dr. Cornell West announced his campaign. Now that Dr. Cornell West left, now you just create a vacuum where the Howie Hawkins shit live wing of the party going to have more, tra- they're going to take over, right? I think that's, anyway, I think it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's fucking sad, man. Anyway, they were talking about Justin. Besides Dow, there were some other Dem Party infiltrators that got into the campaign, likely with Nina Turner influence. There may be a way to salvage. Oh yeah, sorry, I just read that one. Uh, let me let me get to the next one. Thank you for five bucks. Sorry, I tell you, I'm tired. Um, I don't eat before my shows because I don't like feeling bloated. So I'm at two thirty without a single meal. So I'm oh Lord, tired. I can do. Yeah, yeah that's why I can't. That's why it's hard. It's kind of hard to go longer. Thank you for five bucks, Justin. John Kirby is showing his racism. Uh, thank you for five bucks, Justin. Uh, one more that I see here. Oh, I think we caught up. I read this one. Sorry, I'm been a long day. Appreciate you guys for watching. I'm, I'm planning on going live tomorrow unless I have any tech issues, which is a possibility. <laughs> but long, as long as everything is good, I should be going live tomorrow. I'm covering the Syria bombing. Uh, I can pick up. I, I'm gonna cover a little bit of the Bernie thing. My Bernie story was actually the Senate thing, and I was gonna tie the staffer video to that. So I can always do that as well. I think that like that resolution that came after Bernie That's supporters. Crazy. Like it's crazy. So I want to tie those together. As you guys can see, I'm kind of tired. I don't think I have the energy to do it today, but tomorrow I can do I can uh I can weed those segments together. So CJ, I'll let you I'll let, I'll let you send this out. Any last announcement, anything else? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh CJ probably should take a rest. <laughs>
Uh, he'd be better yeah, I'm taking a rest. Because CJ I'm carried the channel. I took, I took, I took three days off. I, I need some days off. Uh, so CJ, you probably should take this weekend off, whatever. Yeah, I'll probably um, take. This I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll cover us Hang tomorrow. So. I see, I see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to end with this very awesome video. If you haven't seen it, an interview that he did with WON, um, and that is uh, Dan uh, Cohen, friend of the show. He's been on the show. He was just on the show last week, as a matter of fact, talking about Israel. Um, does a lot of great reporting on it. Um, if you follow him on Twitter, if you want to know a lot of updates on What's happening on the ground in Israel because he he has a because he reported and lived there for seven months at a time. He has a lot of connections there where he can call into the doctors. You know, his doctors at some of the hospitals that is treating these people. So um, he went on on the left. Uh, the guy in the middle is the African guy in the middle is the host. Then the one on the left is the Zionist and then the run on the right. So it, this interview goes off the rails, and I, I I put it to where when it begins to go off the rails, which is the second half of it. So we're going to watch it about three minutes before we, we go off the air. Thank you for watching. Make sure you join our Substack so you know when Nick goes live uh, tomorrow, join our Substack. And I'll get it scrolling as this video play. I'll get it scrolling. So here we go. There's those who support uh, the mission by Israel. There are those who are against the mission by Israel. What is the White House saying? What are Americans saying? I think the problem is that there is this lack of registration that Hamas is a terrorist designated group here in the United States, and many agree with that, even the Palestinian people. This is not a war against the Palestinians. This is a war against Hamas that carried out a carnage a terrorist attack inside Israel, uh, not with the aim of saving anyone or grabbing land, but with the aim of killing innocent Jewish populations. And that fact that this doesn't register with many people is very concerning. It's very dangerous, uh, considering the fact that the United States has said time and again that it's working, first of all, to get aid into Gaza, unless Hamas decides to once again steal that aid. And second of all, another concern, notably by Egypt, and the reason Egypt is not opening the reform border is because it's afraid that these Hamas terrorists will take advantage of that and join the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. So uh, the United States is trying as well as it can to distinguish between Hamas and the Palestinian people, but it's very difficult when their bases are under hospitals, are under schools, wow. and they're using human shields and the Palestinian people, unfortunately, to set out uh, the message that they're sending out. And, and I think that's something that's extremely disrespectful and heartbreaking, notably for the Israelis who've lost so many people. And of course, in the crossfire for many years, Palestinians have been a victim of Hamas as well. That's how the White House is looking at it, and many Americans here as well. All right, Susan, thank you very much for that point. Dan, as we conclude this, because I'm out of time and I want your brief response to this one, in your view, what can the international community do to help defeat Hamas because they are the problem here. Well, I reject that that premise entirely. Your correspondent just listed off a series of lies that Palestinians use human shields. Israel uses human shields. Israel keeps millions of Palestinians, 2.4 million Palestinians inside a concentration camp, bombs them, starves them, shoots them on a daily basis. And that is the, the fundamental problem here is apartheid Israel. Israel uses human shields so much that it has an actual procedure for it. It's called the neighbor policy. The Israeli human rights group B'Tselem has rights about it. This is documented. Myself, as a reporter in the Palestinian West Bank, in the occupied West Bank, I was used as a human shield by, an Isra by Israeli soldiers. So it's a complete farce. It is pure propaganda. I have no idea what your correspondent is talking about, the other than I don't know if this is just as talking points that she's being fed, but that's not reporting. That is just straight up lies and propaganda. And it's that's, shameful that actually your channel would be would would Don, host this and you're Don, taking such 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 you, this Don. position. Thank you, Don. This this thank is this is Don shameless. Cohen. This is shameless. Don Cohen, thank you very much. Thank you. You should be ashamed. Thank you, you very much. You're